This is Hallmark University Thursday Night Lines. Presented by Jack in the Box. Well, it's about time, huh? High school football season is here. You are looking live at Gustafson Stadium. It is time to kick off the ninth season of Hallmark University's Thursday Night Lights on the CW35. Good evening, everybody. I'm Don Harris, along with my broadcast partner, Chuck McAtinick, who is extra fired up for week one tonight. How can you not be right? I mean, I don't need any Red Bulls for this. It's late August. The weather is great. You've got North Side against Northeast. Two coaches that kind of grew up in the ranks together and a couple of programs that are looking to start the season on a positive note. It's Lee against Taft. They kicked off the season a year ago in a barn burner. We're not expecting anything different tonight. No, and I know Lee had some problems last year with penalties. They're going to probably have that cleaned up tonight. Both of these teams evenly matched. Two totally different philosophies on offenses. We're, on offense, we're going to see a little bit of everything tonight. We're going to see a lot of Vincent Taylor, Chuck. This guy is the real deal. Oh, he really is. I mean, this is one of those kids right there that you want to get the ball into his hands. We're going to see him at receiver. We're going to see him at the slot. He may tote the ball tonight at running back. He may even play corner. Who knows? We may even see him throw the ball. He's that kind of athlete. They've also got a couple of college prospects, including Sam Brooks, who's getting looks from UTSA and the Air Force. Academy. Well, the thing I like about Sam Brooks is he's not only talented, he's a smart kid, and he's the anchor of a really talented and experienced front seven for the Lee Vols. They are really going to make a lot of hay early in the year, especially with those big, meaty guys up front. They're going to have their hands full trying to stop this guy. Justin Stevenson almost ran for 1,000 yards a year ago. He's a guy that ran for six touchdowns, and he will be the focus of the Taft offense. There's absolutely no question about it, and I think a lot of people forget that Justin Stevenson, through five weeks of last season, was actually the city's leading rusher. And if you talk to the Lee coaching staff, they said this guy absolutely pops when you look at the tape. He will absolutely be the guy that they are trying to stop tonight. And if they do, they're going to have a good chance to win. On defense, the Raiders are led by their three-year starter and team captain, Carlos Perdomo, who will be all over the field. Yeah, he's kind of the Josiah Tawafa of the TAP program. Really talented, plays sideline to sideline. You know, the kind of man you're really you're pulling for. He's had to overcome a lot of adversity lately. But he's one of those guys, too, that the other guys on defense are going to look to He's very wise and mature beyond his age. August 31 always means the heat of week one, but we've got some nice weather tonight as we head down to the field for our ASCO game time weather and Mike Hernandez. Mike? Hey guys, how's it going? It's a pleasure to be with you again this year. And yeah, it's a little different this year. And of course, all this are the aftermath of uh, effects of Harvey. And what we're seeing is a little bit cooler temperatures as we go through the evening. There's a nice breeze out of the east right now. Got a nice gust a minute ago at about 10, 15 miles an hour. We're sitting in the low 90s, but actually feels cooler than that because the humidity is down to 30%. So it's looking like a beautiful evening for football. As far as the forecast moving through the season, at least early on, I think we're going to be dealing with the chances for some uh, showers or thunderstorms for the first few Thursdays because tropical weather right now is pretty active. But after that, I think we're going to settle in and things are going to be pretty normal as we finish out the rest of the, the year. All right, it looks like a great night for football tonight and a great matchup between Lee and Taft. When we come back, we'll have our Hallmark University's keys to the game. It's Thursday Night Lights. It's back on the CW35 after this. Closed captioning for tonight's game is sponsored by DNA Reference Lab. You're watching Hallmark University Thursday Night Lines, presented by Jack in the Box. Welcome back to Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. It's Lee and Taft tonight, and right now it is time for our keys to the game. Chuck, we start with the Lee Volunteers. Yeah, for Danny Close's bunch, they want to eliminate the first game mistakes. I mean, in this game a year ago, they had 14 procedural penalties, and that irked Coach Close to no end. Secondly, they don't want any turnovers. And lastly, they want to play defense, i.e. stop Stevenson. Now for the Taft Raiders, Coach Davenport says it's the same three every single game. They want to take care of the ball, be sound in the kicking game, and do not give up the big plays. And you know what? These two guys, as you said earlier, Chuck, coached together coming up. In the, so we had a little fun with them pregame. 
was it 95 or 94? 93. We were 93. together. 93. We made the playoffs. Made the playoffs. Last time Lee's been in the playoffs, 1993. And we beat Seguin. And we were so excited about it, but our head coach had forgotten that we had to scout. And so at 1 o'clock on Saturday while we're working, is it true that he sent us to Harlingen? That's true. That is a true story. Were we able to tell our wives we were leaving? No, we didn't even have time. And I'll tell you the second part of this. Is it true that we had no idea who we were scouting the first half? That is very true. We had no team names, it was colors. Yes, it was. And now we're both head coaches. That's kind of scary. That is real scary. <laughs> <laughs> you will These not find guys. an all of San Antonio. Great guys, great friendship, and they're really looking forward to going against each other. Yeah, I mean, in fact, that was Coach Davenport's idea. I mean, these guys go way back, and honestly, we could have held the microphone out there for them for an hour, and they would have entertained us. It was that good. All right, Lee and Taft getting ready to kick it all off. When we come back, we'll have our national anthem, and we're going to play some football on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Thanks for watching the Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights pregame show. Stay tuned for tonight's first half kickoff. Welcome back to Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. We are ready for kickoff. Let's go down for our national anthem. ROTC from William Howard Taft High School. Manning and carrying the American flag, Michael Ponte. Carrying the Texas flag, Cadet Captain Crystal LaSalle. American Guard, Cadet Second Lieutenant Diego Casimbe. And the Texas Guard, Cadet Second Lieutenant Brenna Castaneda. We are all well aware of the impact the weather has made on our great state over this past week. At this time, we would like to take a moment of silence to remember all of those affected by Hurricane Harvey and its aftermath. Our national anthem this evening will be played by the William Howard Taft Raider High School Marching Band under the direction of Ms. Amanda Stevenson. Thanks for watching the Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights pregame show. Stay tuned for tonight's first half kickoff. Welcome back to Gustafson Stadium, everybody. It's week one of Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Danny closes. Lee Volunteers getting ready to kick off their season against Coach Davenport's Taft Raiders. 
And Chuck, this was a great game a year ago. Two very evenly matched teams, and we're looking forward to a very exciting ball, clo uh, ball game tonight. Well, the thing you like about the Lee Vols and Coach Closa is he's one of those guys that likes to sling it around the yard. So they're going to be passing it. Even on running downs, they're going to use the pass a lot of times in lieu of the run. And so that's going to be kind of fun to watch. And then on the other side of the ball, you have the Taft Raiders and Coach Davenport. They like to ground and pound, and they make no apologies for it. It's going to be fun. We'll see a little bit of everything. All right, tonight's first half kickoff, sponsored by Ernest Roofing. They have you covered, and the Lee Volunteers are set to receive. So Lee will have the football first. Taft will be doing the kicking. And uh, as always tonight, we're going to be keeping our eye on Stevenson when Taft has the ball, but the Lee Volunteers have some terrific athletes. Kicking it off for Taft will be Sebastian Mendoza Torres, DeAndre Woodward and Vincent Taylor, two very electrifying returners are back. Woodward wears number 14, Woodard rather. Vincent Taylor wears number two, that's him right there. And the kick is short, barely gonna go 10 yards. It's on the ground, it's loose. Don't know if it went 10 yards, but if it did, it's Taft football on a onside little pooch kick. Carlos Perdomo, we told you he was going to be all over the field at linebacker, making a play on special teams. How about that? Start the season and do a little trickeration. We thought the first one would come from Coach Closen. In fact, it's just the opposite. Coach Davenport, he was all fired up as well. He should be. You start the season and you get yourself an extra possession. So just like that, we'll start with Taft having the football. They're going to be led by Julian De Hoyos. He's a captain. We remember him from a year ago, played some running back. He'll be playing the quarterback position tonight. And of course, Justin Stevenson, the back that we told you about who ran for over 700 yards a year ago is the tailback behind him. First and 10 inside Lee territory already and it's Stevenson with the first carry. He's got a bunch, he's got a first down or he's near it right at the marker as uh, Stacy Woodard makes the tackle. Nice game there on first down, Chuck. Absolutely, and you see the size of the big beasties up front for the Tap Raiders. They are very experienced. In fact, probably their most experienced part of their field, their part of their game is gonna be up front, and Stevenson just running behind those guys there, getting a big first down here to start the ball game. De Hoyos has the sun in his eyes here on second and a long one. Snaps it, looks for Stevenson again, but we've got an early whistle, some sort of motion before the snap. And as we've seen in week ones in the past, as we listen in. It was procedure against Taft. And as we've seen many times in week one, expect a lot of yellow flags in week one. As it's new for the uh, players, for the officials, and for the broadcasters. Everybody get <laughs> their feet wet. Charlie Wernette, our lead official tonight. Well, we'll see if that really comes back to bite him because on that first down run, they made it look awfully easy using those big guys up front. So now it's second and about six and a half. Stevenson behind the Hoyos. He fakes to him. He's looking over the middle. Got a man and it's caught for the first down. Right at the marker and maybe a yard past is Carlos Herrera. Now, Carlos Herrera is one of those kids, too, that we could see at quarterback before the end of the year. And, you know, that's the power of the run game. You have such an electrifying running back back there and a powerful runner that you can do that. Play action pass stuff is going to work downfield all the time. So that's good for Akil Bassa. Smoked meets first down. New sponsor tonight. And they're closing in on the red zone. De Hoyos hands to Stevenson. Does a good job to fight off one tackler, but Tim Longoria wasn't having any of it and stayed with it and brought him down. Yeah, talk about holding the edge. The senior Longoria, 5'10", 190 pounds, really doing a good job. And obviously Stevenson's not the easiest guy to get on the turf as big as he is. And Longo just holding his own out there. Stuck on an island. It's all right, coach, I got your back. It's a hold of the jersey. and. Wraps him up and brings him down. Nice play. So no gain as it's second long. Martin Ramirez split to the right. Here's the hand to Stevenson again. 
He's got at least six before he's dropped down, but again, a flag on the play. We're not sure what the penalty is. Looked like somebody may have jumped, but Abdul Yusuf doing a really nice job getting over there and tackling a Stevenson low on that play. So if you're a lip reader, you can see that Charlie Ornett said holding on the offense. Replay second down, 10 yard penalty. That'll back up the Raiders who are kind of kicking themselves in the foot right now because they've had some good positive plays both on the ground and through the air, but penalties keep them about where they started this drive. They've got a little bit of everything working already tonight, as we saw a little gadget play to start the ball game on the kickoff, and they've run the ball well, and they've even completed a pass, but we're going to get a timeout here. Yep, Brian Davenport didn't like what he saw, was running a new formation. It'll be second down for the Taft Raiders when we come back on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Back everybody, we have the pleasure of introducing a new title sponsor for Thursday Night Lights. It's Hallmark University. This is Taylor Mercier and he's the Vice President. How are you doing? Doing great, how are you doing today? Hey, first, thank you so much. Thank we you. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And, and this is exciting, man. I mean, you're right on the sidelines. You get to experience it firsthand. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. It, it brings back memories of playing back in the day. So. Did you play? I did, at Churchill. And so definitely bringing back some memories. Don Harris will want to talk to you because he's a Churchill grad too. <laughs> hey, so thank you for, for being a part of TNL. Um, why did you guys get involved? Well, we're really proud to have the opportunity to work with CW to, to sponsor Thursday Night Lights. To us, it's not just about sponsoring the athletes that go out week over week and leave their heart out on the field. It's about representing and acknowledging the educators, the coaches, and the parents that have dedicated their lives to um, raising and, and, and educating our future generations. As a nonprofit educator, that's something we can really rally behind. So for folks that uh, maybe don't know all the things that you all are involved in, tell us a little bit about Hallmark University. Well, Hallmark University is a nonprofit educator in San Antonio. We're native to San Antonio. have been educating for um, almost a half of a century. So um, we focus in core, four core areas of study, um, aeronautics, business, IT and cybersecurity, and healthcare. All right, Taylor, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for having us. We appreciate it. All right, back to you guys. Looking forward to hearing more about Hallmark all season long here on Thursday Night Lights. As you watched, De Hoyos had a man wide open. Carlos Herrera was down there, but just let him out of bounds. And so that'll set up a third and long situation. 19, in fact here so he's got two of his best receivers split to the right Ramirez and Herrera and he's looking that way to the right as he rolls out and fires he's got and that one was just dropped by Herrera so he's already got one catch tonight and he was wide open for a touchdown on the previous play but just kicking themselves both with penalties and missed execution but Chuck I like what I see so far from the Taft offense I think before we see Everything said and done tonight, well, they're going to have some explosive plays. No question about it. And Julian DeHoyo is really moving well to his right there. That wouldn't have picked up the first down, but we have given Coach Davenport something to think about there about fourth and 10, fourth and 11, because you're at the kind of the point in the field where, you know, you might be able to take a shot at it, but instead, obviously, with fourth and a million, you got to go ahead and punt. Yep, he's their punter, DeAndre Woodward, back to receive, but this is just an absolute shank. It may have gone up out to the line of scrimmage it may be a net two yards uh and that's it so the lee vols dodge a bullet too uh we're going to be backed up in their own territory and now they're going to have the ball spotted right near the 35 yard line we're going to be excited about seeing that lee offense running out caleb engelbrecht at quarterback darnell remigio is their running back and they have high hopes for him and of course keep your eye on Taylor and Woodard, they're two explosive wide receivers. First and 10, Engelbrecht keeps it after faking it to Taylor, but again, we've got a whistle and another pre-snap penalty. Ball start, offense, five yard penalty, replay, first down. I'm glad we don't have a camera on Coach Closa. <laughs> was the first thing he told me this week. Here's the big guys up front for Lee. 
Avera, Martinez, Bell, Foose, and Prisciliano. We talked about Engelbrecht in the in the backfield. He's joined by Remigio. Vincent Taylor, who's got the football right now. Escobedo, Silvera, and Woodard, the other wide receivers. Second down and 11. As you have your eye on Taylor there on your screen. Again, it's week one. Lee's going with all those crazy symbols on bulletin boards to call their plays. So new play calling system there. And they're having a tough time executing right now in week one as Remigio ended up with it, but it's a big time loss on the play as Nathan Cano was back there to make the tackle. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly the start that Danny Closa was trying to avoid. You get a penalty on the first snap, then you get a low snap on the second play or the third play, and all of a sudden you're just going backwards. And, you know, this is an explosive offense there. As Coach Davenport said, they're three plays away from being up 21 to nothing. They've got that kind of explosion on the outside. Get the ball in Taylor's hands. He's looking for running room, but has nowhere to go as coming up strong was Anthony Guerrero to make the stop. Yeah, Anthony Guerrero playing a little center field there, and well, the receiver was trying to work his way upfield. He just made a beeline up there, squared him up, and was able to bring him down, and that's going to bring up fourth down and another early punt as these two teams feel, he out, feel each other out here to start this ball game. Well, as we said, it's week one. They've only had a couple of scrimmages, both teams. In fact, teams all over the city will be going through a little rough spots here in week one. Engelbrecht, their quarterback, is also their punter. And he takes a low snap, but there's no rush, so he gets it away quickly. It's going to take a little hop and be downed right there at about the 43, 44-yard line, and that's where Taft will have it when we come back. It's 0-0 halfway through the first on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. All right, and welcome back. Uh, joined on the sidelines by Hugo Escobedo. He is the Lee Band Director. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Good. So we were talking, you got a, 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 a crop of kids, you got your seniors, your juniors, but you got a lot of freshmen this year. A lot of freshmen this year, yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun this year. A good group, um, very enthusiastic, so we're really, uh, really happy to have them. Good. Yeah, that's going to be a challenge, though, isn't it? It always is, but uh, the kids are up for it. I mean, they've been showing up since the end of July. Wow. Um, and, I mean, working out in the hot heat uh, on that astro, the, the turf, and just everything. So they're, they're really working hard, and, yeah, we're really enjoying it. Uh, and what are we going to see at halftime? Um, the show is entitled Nightmare Unraveled. Uh, we're going to have a character that falls asleep and she'll wake up um, part of a nightmare so we'll try to bring that up to life wow well that sounds really interesting i'll be watching for that yeah, all righty right. good luck thank tonight you very much. and good luck this season awesome okay? thank you very much back to you guys all right thanks mike and on first down the raiders hit on a quick little pass to martin ramirez and that picks up about seven yards nick Poole there to make the stop and now we may see second gear here from brian davenport's offense yeah, it's showing a lot of pass early. I mean, I think that's taken us a little bit by surprise. We know what they like to do, put it on the ground and kind of beat you up that way, but they're really giving the ball something to think about by coming out and chucking it early. Straight eye with Stevenson behind the Hoyos, and he's got it, looking for the sweep. Nowhere to go there as the ball's out. Lee might have it. Lee does. Stacy Woodard's got the football, and Lee has a first down. I'm going to tell you what, Don, just an unbelievable play by Jesse Salinas holding his own over there on that side of the football, kind of blowing it up from the get-go. Look at him. He's shaking his block, and he was the kid that actually knocked it out. I'll tell you what, this lead defense, we talked about their experience at the onset and their front seven, how talented they are. They're not the biggest group in the world, but they will get after you. And Coach Closer was really talking about how well they came through their camps and preseason preparations he was really excited to see what this defense could do and right now you'd have to say they've held their own here in the first quarter just punched it out ball was on the carpet nice recovery and here come the Vols they are in Taft territory for the first time Engelbrecht checking his three wides fakes to Taylor little play action he's running for his life as flags fly everywhere could have a hold Meanwhile, he completes it to the 40 and close to a first down is Marcus Silva or Silvera, but 
Noah Shannon Hatchet was there with the tackle, but I think this is coming back. Yeah, aptly named Noah Shannon Hatchet. <laughs> he was bringing some sort of weapon over there on that takedown. Nice work. Oh. Offense, a 10 yard penalty, replay, first down. Yeah, Don, you can really see why Lee is excited with Caleb Engel but back there at quarterback. I mean, this kid's brother was 6'5 and played defense for the balls a couple of years back. And Danny Close was telling us he loves this kid. He plays quarterback, but he plays with a linebacker's mentality. And I think the thing I like and was most impressed about that particular play was, you know, he's running for his life back there, but he kept his head and his eyes downfield the entire time and was able to find a guy, albeit it had to come back. Bought some time. Here's Taylor. Nice little stutter step. And Taylor's just very, very explosive offensively, and I think he's going to get untracked. Yeah, they don't have Samuel Davis, you know, their big workhorse that they had back there last year, so they're going by committee, but they got some guys that can play now. Engelbrecht completing that one. Silvera with the catch. Also inside uh, Taft territory. And now you're looking at our America's Diamond Smile Cam, highlighting all of these great fans. Smile Cam, checking out the fans having a great time. Another completion from Engelbrecht, this time to Woodward. And he's got a first down. A really nice pattern there on the slant. and. This is the young man that they were talking about with all the talent that they have a wide receiver. This is their best guy right now. He can get you on a slant like that. He can beat you over the top. He can beat you a lot of ways. Engelbrecht feeling it right now. They got some rhythm to this offense. He's going deep. Got a man wide open and it's dropped. No, it's intercepted. Here come the Raiders bringing it back. Hatchet. Shannon Hatchet to the 30 off the deflection. Wide open. And it went off the hands of Severa into the hands of Hatchet. Well, right on the money with the throw. Looked like it was going to be an easy touchdown. And I'll be darn, he sure did. Caught the deflection right off the knee of the receiver. And landed right in his lap. Yeah, and how about the return, too? They're going to bring it back. I think there was a, some sort of penalty on the return, but... Just an outstanding play and tremendous concentration by Mr. Hatchet. We talked about the tackle that he made a couple of plays previous. So we've had everything here in the first quarter of week one. We've had onside kicks. We've had fumbles and recoveries and turnovers and interceptions. Great plays. Little sloppy, but it's not short of athleticism, no, that's for sure. absolutely. And I mean, you talk about Shannon Hatchet. I mean, I don't know if that was his man or not, but it just talks about, you know, the stick to itiveness. You know, you just stay after a play. You never know, and he never stopped playing. Ended up with an Oski. All right, so here's the Hoyos. Hands to Stevenson. He's going backwards, but he's making something out of nothing, and he gets clear. Look out. Stevenson past midfield, turning on the Jets. Stevenson's going to score. Touchdown, Raiders. Flag flies after he crossed the plane. This is going to be an interesting call. It may be coming back, or it could be on the defense. I think the touchdown's going to stand, but what an absolutely electric run by Justin Stevenson. I mean, Doug Karam had him. Two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Charlie Warnett and crew talking it all over, and boy, did he turn on the Jets. And you cannot tackle this guy upstairs too often and think you're going to be able to bring him down. He's just too strong. What a turn of events for Coach Close. He is obviously not happy. He went from having seven for his squad, and one play later, there's seven going the other way. Let's listen to the call from Charlie. Took him a while to discuss this, and he still wants to figure it out with his other line judge. This is not just leveling the penalty, but also interpreting 
how it will be assessed based on when it happened. Brian Davenport's offense is backed up to around the 20-yard line. And there's talk that if he celebrated early, perhaps there's no touchdown. Here we go, Charlie. Here comes the extra point. It against the defense. Defense, the touchdown. The penalty will be enforced. All right, so it will be enforced on the kickoff. Personal foul on defense, touchdown's good. It's at least 6 nothing. Taft and trying to add the extra point right now is Christian Mendoza Torres, Sebastian Mendoza Torres, excuse me. And that kick just squeaks through the right side and Taft leads it. 7-0 here in the first quarter after a brilliant run by Justin Stevenson. We're back after this. All right, and welcome back again. On the sidelines right now, I'm joined by a face that you're very familiar with. This is Wes Bookbinder from San Antonio Sports, President and CEO. How are you, sir? See you, Mike. And on my right here from the U.S. Army is Lieutenant Colonel Blunt. How are you? Hey, I'm great, sir. I'm a pleasure to be here. Oh, well, listen, I appreciate you guys both taking the time uh, to come on out here. So much to talk about. There's something that you guys are doing a little bit different, and it's called Beyond the Game. And can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, sir. Well, Beyond the Game is what it is. San Antonio Sports and the United States Army are teaming up to recognize high school and middle school athletes for some of the things they're exhibiting in terms of key values. So we're looking at is looking at those that are involved in the community, mentorship, uh, community service, um, and those that face adversity and was able to overcome those adversity and challenges. I got you. How did you guys come up with the idea and then how did you come up with, with your candidates? Well, there's a, a book out there uh, called uh, Beyond the Game, A Coach's Influence Beyond the Game by Grant Taft, which kind of spurred this on. NISD is doing a great job from the top down of really getting their coaches to focus on values, both modeling it with their athletes and getting their athletes to uh, really reflect those. So this program is going to recognize middle and high school teams. We want people to go to sanantoniosports.org and upload a picture or a video and a narrative that tells us what was that program, why it was important. And on TNL Halftime, we'll be airing a lot of those videos and pictures. And then for the All-Star Game in the Dome, we'll bring uh, some of those outstanding teams to the Dome and recognize them at the All-Star Game. Sounds like a wonderful idea. And again, we will see the first of these at halftime today. Hey, Lieutenant you. Colonel Blunt, thank you. Thank you for hey, your service. You. I appreciate it. Appreciate God bless you. And God bless as always. Thanks. Always a pleasure. All right. Thanks, Mike. And beyond the game, fantastic uh, implementation by Stan Lang and the Northside District. And we're going to be highlighting some of those great stories from the district all season long as Lee's got the football in the handle, <coughs> excuse me, to Darnell Remigio. He had nowhere to go as T.J. Aquande was back there to make the tackle. And we say T.J. Aquande because there's about 14 more letters in his name. But that's the way they that's what they call him. I feel his pain, by the way. <laughs> nice completion there. Woodard with this catch. Picks up about five. Quincy Chapman on that Taft defense. Making the tackle. We'll take a look at their starters here in just a second, but they're moving the ball quickly. Third down here. And eight yards as Engelbrecht has four wides. Play action, straight drop. Running for his life. Trying to get to the stick is going to be a little short. That's going to set up fourth down as Jacob Walton forced him out of bounds. Here's that defense that just held Chapman, Cano, McCluskey, Unger, Guerrero, Walton, and Perdomo, who's already been all over the field today. And they are also very, very good up front. Fourth and about two, and it looks like the Vols are thinking about going for it, but Engelbrecht can do two things here. He can also try to get him to jump, and he is also their punter, so he can drop back and kick it if need be. In their own territory, and he is going to quick kick it. 
nobody back there to receive it and it takes a lee hop inside the 30 and it'll be down right there at the 30 yard line where the taft raiders will have it and they've got a seven point lead we've seen the explosiveness of Justin Stevenson and Chuck it appears that really running backs quarterbacks everybody carrying the football tonight on both sides dancing a lot to try to get uh, laterally east and west more than north and south but on that particular touchdown Stevenson turned uh, kind of a dancing east and west thing into six you know Don honestly you got week one here week zero nerves a lot of kids seeing varsity snaps for the first time You've got opening night, they're on TV. There's a lot of stuff going on, man. When I was a kid, if I would have been doing this in high school, I'll tell you what, I, they'd have to call somebody to come clean me up. <laughs> <laughs> Stevenson's got it. Picks up a, maybe the line of scrimmage to get back. And you know, we've seen some really nice plays, and I think a lot of this is just, you know, they're going to get a rhythm. And you can tell the Vols, there's a lot going on, man. They're a multifaceted kind of multi-talented offense. They can run it, they can sling it. They've got a new quarterback. So there's a lot of moving parts here. And you know, you're lining up for the first time and really playing at game speed. Yeah, I would imagine it's gonna take a, you know, a couple of series to get this thing figured out. All right, well, second down and 10 for DeHoyos as he drops, flag flies, fires, has a man, it's caught. Herrera's got it. Enough for a first down, but again, we've got laundry on the field. Really nice play, though, by Julian DeHoyos, moving to his left, setting his feet and then throwing a strike downfield. You know, his brother was also a quarterback at Taft. And so the name DeHoyos has kind of been yeah, household name around these parts. Illegal formation. The offense, it's a five-yard penalty. Replay, second down. Again, just when Taft gets something going, penalties have killed them tonight. And they're going to be stuck with second down and 15 now as they got 2.15 left to play here in the quarter. Yeah, it's just one of those things, you know. We've had big plays really from both sides. Lee looked like they were going to have one and they really couldn't convert. The ball gets intercepted. And then, of course, Davenport then took it to the house on Taft's big play. De Hoyos. Got to get 15, takes off running. He gets back to the stick and a gain of about one, but Tim Longoria doing a nice job to get over there and submarine him for maybe a gain of one or two. Yeah, and it could have been a loss too. And I'll tell you what, you talk about Justin Stevenson and his ability to run the ball and catch the ball out of the backfield and do all kinds of things. I mean, he did a really nice job there picking up the block. Otherwise that play could have been for a negative. Now it'll be third down and about 12 for De Hoyos and the Raiders offense. Herrera split to his right. He's got Stevenson behind him, but this is pass all the way, rolling right, firing, and it's caught. Martin Ramirez has it well short of a first down. Woodard there with the coverage, and it's gonna set up fourth down for the Raiders in their own territory. And you would think they'd have to kick it away here. Yeah, Martin Ramirez doing a really nice job coming out of his route. Ball slightly underthrown, so they're gonna punt the football here, but Coach Davenport talked about his receivers in general, and he said, you know, we haven't had some really big kids like we've had in years past out there, but he really liked these guys as a group. Really likes their speed, their ability to catch the ball, and uh, they've made some plays here already tonight. De Hoyos will kick it away to Woodard. This is a much better kick aimed at the sideline. And we'll see where they spot it. The official still walking up the sideline. He's coming a long way all the way to the 35 yard line. And the Vols will have it there with 31 seconds left in the quarter. Now we'll see if the Lee offense can get on track here. We've had some penalties as you said Don on both sides and I'll tell you what, talking about Caleb Engelbrecht and his ability to play quarterback, he got on the field a little bit last year, but you know, was really talking him up was Coach Davenport from Taft. He goes, I really like this kid's release. It's one of the best I've seen. And 
Coach Kaloza said, man, I'll tell you what, this kid is really a hard worker and really worked hard this offseason getting ready for this year. Look at him throw a chip block. A double reverse to Woodard, not going anywhere. Back to the line of scrimmage, but the Taft defense, including Clyde Jones, had that one sniffed out, and they stopped the balls for a loss. Yeah, and it's usually one of those plays, too, where hey, you're talking about opening night jitters and guys not staying home. Not that time. You could tell Coach Dab's team was staying at home and made a play. Last play of the quarter. Engelbrecht running, caught short of the line of scrimmage, and that'll blow the horn. Juan Alarcon with the tackle. We're three, through one at Gustafson Stadium in the Taft Raiders on a long touchdown run by Justin Stevenson lead the Lee Volunteers 7-0 quarter number two when we come back. Time for our Smiley Orthodontic half first quarter highlights. The interception right there by Noah Shannon Hatchett set up the long touchdown run by Justin Stevenson who found a way to get out of trouble and take it to the house. And that's been the extent of the scoring here in the first quarter as Taft has a 7-0 lead and we move on to quarter number two. And that's our Smiley Orthodontics first quarter highlights. There you right, see Coach Danny. Closer, yeah, trying to rally the troops right here. I mean, obviously, nothing to panic about. You're in a one-score game, and you just kind of feel like if this offense can get a little bit of a rhythm going, knock out some of these penalties that kind of get kick-started here, we might see some more fireworks. Third down and about 11. Engelbrecht wants to throw over the middle and now does, and just all over it, knocking it away was number 23, Richard Galindo. He had that one eyeballed and made a great textbook defensive play to get his left arm up and knock it away. Yeah, there's some inexperience on the left side of the, or on the defensive side for Taft. And tell you what, no, no worse for wear right there. I mean, it's standing up and making a play in the backside. Engelbrecht hanging strong in the pocket, tried to throw one over the middle and squeeze one in, but not having any of that. Clyde Jones back to receive the punt from Engelbrecht. As Lee going nowhere here in the first half offensively. Had some opportunities. That's a short kick that'll bounce right at about the 40. The Vols get a good roll inside the Taft 30-yard line, and that's where the Raiders will have it, and DeHoyos will lead his offense back on the field. 64 TJ squeezing through over there, putting some heat on the punter, made him kick a little bit quicker than he wanted to. Special teams always big in the first couple of weeks of the season because it's the thing that teams practiced the least uh, in the preseason and in two days. And so you see a lot of times big plays happen on special teams. Yeah, and Coach Dav, you know, that's one of his keys to victory tonight you know he wanted to be sound in the kicking game and his three keys are something that he likes to bring to every single game and, and you talk about the game of football and how important it is to you know be strong be tough have some guys that can run and catch and throw and do all that and how many games do we see decided in the kicking game it's just unbelievable week after week at every level first down and 10 for the Raiders De Hoyos with Stevenson behind him. Two wides over here. Fires this way to Silva. And Silvera breaks a tackle across the 40. A great job to split the defense. My fault. That's Martin Ramirez on the catch. As we look at the rest of the Taft defense, Ariano, Heck, Gonzalez, Garza, and Laxton New up front on the offensive side. Stevenson, Ramirez, Maddox, Vasquez, and Garcia, the wide receiver. Marshall Maddox is the guy they like to get the football to, both as a fullback slot and kind of throw him out there as a wide receiver as well. That's another Kiyobasa smoke meets first down as we've got more movement up front. It looked like the Raiders jumped on the left side. Now, I really like the way they're calling these plays over on the Taft sideline. I mean, we all expected 
to see them come out and just pound the football with their big stud running back that's committed to Navy, Stevenson. And, of course, he's already scored the one touchdown tonight. But coming out throwing on those early downs really gives the other defense something to think about. So the Hoyos will send his strong side to the right side to split that way. He's got Stevenson blocking for him as he rolls right and fires that way to the tight end, and it's incomplete. Nice big hit right as the ball got there. Tim Longoria called his name a few times tonight. Was right there all over the play and knocked it up right, knocked it away right as the ball was arriving. All right, so now we got second and long. See if they go back to the air or maybe uh, kind of set up some of these pass plays with pass plays that, you know, kind of function as run plays with these wide receiver pitches real quick. Let's see if they do it again or take a shot downfield. Here's Stevenson. He's got some room. Boy, you can see his burst. He's a different level kid out there right now. Youssef making the tackle, but there's been two or three plays, and you can see his size as well. Yeah, I mean, four-year starter, interested in flying and engineering, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I think he's got his beat in the IQ department, bro. Yep, no question about it. Well, you know, he's overcome a lot of adversities in his life, but I'll tell you what, Coach Davenport was really proud of this kid. He said when he had one of the Navy coaches in his office and when Stevenson was committing, he said, Coach Davenport said he got choked up. I mean, it was just really kind of cool to see what this kid's been able to do and, and where he's going with his life. That's why you coach, right? Yep. Stevenson busting it to the outside. Big gainer there. Another first down. Nick Poole on the stop, but another Kielbasa smoke meets. First down for Stevenson and the Raiders, and they're and on the move. And it's so much more, Don, as you know, than just running and busting heads and doing all that. I mean, on that particular play right there, he was just super patient. You know, wait for some things to develop downfield. Wait for your blockers to get out there and truck guys for you. And the guy's got the whole package. I mean, he's one of those fellas, as we said, I mean, through five weeks of the season last year, this guy was leading the city in rushing. Yeah, you can tell he stands out above the others. and. So does this guy making another great play to split the tacklers is Martin Ramirez. He's done that twice tonight. He's inside the lead 15 all the way down to about the 12 yard line and inside the miracle mattress red zone. You know, it's funny. We were talking to Coach Davenport and he was telling us about how as a group he really liked these guys and he was talking about number 11 right up off the top saying, you know, obviously these guys aren't as big as we've had in the past. You know, they had Michael Cooper last year's stud who's also playing at one of the service academies. But these guys are good in space. They're tough. And you got to earn the tackling business on the other side. They're not easy to bring down. James Garcia to the left side. Carlos Herrera to the right. In motion goes Maddox. And here goes Stevenson. Thought he might throw a halfback pass at first, but instead he turns it up. Takes a pretty good lick by Corey Puente, who came up to hit him. Small gain on the play. He had a really nice job by the lead defense that time, stringing it out. I mean, you can see the patience of Justin Stevenson once again on display. There just simply was nowhere to go because there were so many of the lead guys holding that edge over there on that side of the football. So we got second down at about eight. Two wide left. Instead, it's Stevenson going to try to bounce it. Does, but coming up again to make another tackle is Tim Longoria, who must have a handful already. Four or five tackles for Longoria. He wasn't the only one, man. That was, that was some kind of play over there. I mean, you're right. Longoria actually got blocked twice and still was able to make the play, but got a little help over there. And Again, we talked about the front seven of the Lee Vols. Really experienced, really talented, and the key for Lee this year, because you know their district is tough as anybody's, and obviously Taft has got the same complaints. You know, you're playing a powerhouse every night, but they've got to stay healthy on that side of the ball, and if they do, I think they're going to be one of those teams that can compete and surprise some people. Third and six, De Hoyas rolling, fire to the end zone, and overshot his intended receiver. That one had no chance at all, and that's going to set up fourth down and we'll see what kind of kicking game the Taft Raiders run out here as they will attempt to kick a field goal. They'll spot it right at about the 
19, maybe 18 yard line. So it'll be a 28 yarder from Sebastian Mendoza Torres. I'm still thinking about Sam Brooks, man. 280 pounds over there chasing down the quarterback and disrupting that play right there at the nose. Nice job. De Hoyas with the hold. It's down. The kick is on its way. And the kick is good. Taft putting three more on the board, and the Raiders lead the Lee Vols 10-0 on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. All right, welcome back. I'm joined by our presenting sponsors this year. Welcome, Jack in the Box. This is Tina Schubert, Hi. and she's one of the regional trainers. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me out. This is wonderful. Oh, well, I, I love your smile already. I know you're going to bring a lot of energy to this. Why did Jack in the Box get involved? Well, we wanted to be part of the community. We're already part of the community, and this is just a great fit. It's awesome to be out here and support all the teams and everything. It really is. It's it's nice to be out, actually out on the field. Oh, it's it? beautiful out. Everybody should come out. I think we have it better than the guys up in the booth there, because oh, they're like, they're like, <laughs> okay, so you have a, a promotion here coming up too that you wanted to talk about. Oh, I want everybody to come out and try our really big chicken sandwich combo. Uh, you can come out and it's uh, 3 dollars so come out and get one. Wait, 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 wait. So what is the big chicken combo? Because this is like a no, really big. We don't big. have a big chicken combo. We have a really big chicken combo. <laughs> so you got to come out and try that. All right. I want to taste the really big chicken combo really next big. week. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Tina. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jack in the Box, for joining us. Back to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. Our thanks to Jack in the Box for joining us this year. That's awesome. Jack in the Box already winning the, the shirt competition tonight of the sponsors. The bling was nice. Ryan Escobedo there bringing in the kick. Danny closes squad trying to get on the scoreboard. They are shut out so far here in the second quarter. Danny Close, a great guy, uh, played at Lee, from Lee. Been in the Northeast District for a long time. Coached at Lee, coached at Mac with Van Fushak, and uh, does a great job with his kids over there. It's only a matter of time before he gets it uh, untracked. And as we were talking pregame, Chuck, this is a guy who's beaten stage four lymphoma twice. And so uh, what a warrior Danny Close is. And every time we see him down on the field, it's like glad he's still with us. Yeah, I mean, super guy has a lot of fun. I mean, I just like the things that, you know, his three absolutes are, as a coach, he wants to win. He's coaching teams to win championships. They're not going to settle for anything less. And number three is have fun. And I think really that's what it's all about. And I love those cards. One of them has Coach Davenport. <laughs> that's what I was laughing at. It's his buddy, Coach Brian Davenport. The Taft coach is on the on the card right there <laughs> and that's got to be a sign just to his buddy right well it's funny because it i heard from one of the other assistant coaches that they try to find the least attractive picture they can find of the opposing <laughs> team's coach <laughs> and i'm not going to rat out the coach that told me that <laughs> that's good stuff it was engelbrecht he's got some speed pops it good for about 10 unfortunately they needed about 15 so he's about five yards short of a first down is richard galindo there to make the tackle but you can see the athleticism and athletic ability that we heard about pregame. Trips wide right, third down and five for Engelbrecht, who's now changing the play, making a little bit of a call there. Looking to the right side, fires the slant, and it's caught. Look out. And look out. DeAndre Woodard, touchdown falls. Oh, do I love that play call, man. They just sucker punched him. 53 yards for the score. Engelbrecht threw it on a rope. Woodard made a nice fundamental catch and then off to the races. Yeah, DeAndre Woodard, what you like about this kid, you know, apparently he was at Lee, went to Wagner with his brother Stacy, and then came back, but exceptional hands. He could be a possession guy. But he can also, as you just see, beat you over the top. And what I love about that play call was it looked like they were just going to throw a middle screen. They had everybody set up for it and then just turn Woodard loose. The extra point is up and good by David Rodriguez. And the Lee Vols have cut it to three. It's Taft 10, Lee 7 on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights.
Right, and one of our sponsors, that we're, again, we're very proud to welcome back is Countywide Services. This is Shirley Smith, co-owner. How are you? Nice to see you, Mike. And Tracy Luna, how are you? Now, Tracy, you actually work with Countywide, correct? Yes, I'm the office manager, yes. But you're dressed in the... Oh, yes, but I'm not dressed for it today. Yes, I have to be... I have to sponsor my daughter today. And, Which, what's her name? Uh, Brianna Luna. And she's actually she's in the band? baritone player, yes. Oh, and you're yes. the band mom? Yes, I am. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right, thank you all for joining us again uh, this year to be part of, of TNL. Why do you guys do it? For this very reason, we have a lot of kids, you know, at work, and the, the families, we enjoy that, supporting the kids, and we love to come out and watch them. It's a great thing. I mean, Texas high school football. It doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So is, it. is your daughter a senior? No, she's a junior. Oh, so yes. you get to do this yes. for another year. One more year. Enjoy yes. it, because it goes away really fast before yeah, you I know. <laughs> yes, does. I am enjoying every minute. <laughs> Shirley, thank you so much. We'll we see you soon. appreciate it. Thank you, Countywide. And again, uh, Another great sponsor that's joining us, and, and they all see the value, and, and what a beautiful thing this is. Thursday Night Lights, it's really something special for everybody involved. It was just yesterday you were playing, Mike. That's right. just yesterday. Daniel Rodriguez with the kick. It's going to be taken at about the 22-yard line. A nice little return by Quincy Chapman, the up man, and the Taft Raiders will try to extend their lead, but leave Volunteers' defense Got to be fired up a little bit after get a little momentum off the touchdown by Woodard. Absolutely. And then you see Taft, you know, their goal for this game was to try to shorten it because of the explosive players that Lee has, especially a wide receiver. You just saw that on display. But that was one of their absolutes for this ball game. Don't get beat by any big plays. But, you know, sometimes it's easier said than done. You let a guy like Woodard have some free space or get a clean run down the field, and you're asking for trouble. All right, we're waiting for the uh, the officials to give us the, the green light. And here come the Raiders, De Hoyos, Stevenson, who's already popped one. Man, I just, every time that ball is snapped, I'm just waiting for him to do something special. He, he just has that look about him, the way he carries himself. He's a superior athlete. And he can break it at any moment. It's a kielbasa meets first down for the Raiders. De Hoyos fires to the far side, incomplete. Intended receiver was Todd Haley. Corey Puente on the coverage. That'll bring up second down as the sun set and we've got the lights on and beautiful night for football here at Gustafson Stadium. We told you a little bit about the Beyond the Game program. Taft Raiders running out tonight with some of the special needs kid from their community through the banner. It's just another way that they give back. As De Hoyos tried to complete it. Chuck's throwing the flag, and he's exactly right. The contact came before the young man had the opportunity to catch it. That was Francisco Vasquez, but no call. You know what, Don? I've really been impressed with Julian De Hoyos's ability to not only scramble and get out of trouble, not only to roll out, go to his wrong side and throw a football, but just his ability to get the ball to where it needs to be. I mean, he's been spot on, and that definitely was pass interference right there, but I always got to give love, too, to his two-sport guy. He's an outfielder on the baseball team as well, and a good one. They're going to hand it to Stevenson on third and ten. He gets back to the line of scrimmage and nothing else as Nathan Trevino was there to make the tackle along with Jesse Salinas. Two balls there on defense and as we said, they may have been a little bit inspired by the way their offense has just answered the bell and going to get that offense the ball back and the man who scored the touchdown, DeAndre Woodard, is back to receive the punt standing at his own 39-yard line. Well, this Vols defense is really talented and really veteran. You know, with the four guys up front and they're all three linebackers are back they're a little young with a couple of their dbs but these guys are holding their own early for sure this one's returnable but taking a pop is woodard and look at like big number 68 got in there john garza came in there and popped him right as he tried to go north and south yeah you don't usually see a guy with a number six on the front part of his jersey 
rushing down there and making a play too often. Big fellow showing some speed too. Hey, the San Antonio Sports All-Star Cheer Challenge powered by CPS Energy is underway. You su submit a photo of your school's cheer team and tell us why they're the best. The two top vote getters will get $1,000 and a $500 grant. And the top four squads will win the opportunity to cheer at the nationally televised U.S. Army All-American Bowl or the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game presented by HEB. Engelbrecht running, breaks a tackle, got a first down inside lead territory and out of bounds. So don't forget to register your cheer squad at the CW35.com. Up the, uh, the grants this year, a $1,000 grant and a $500 grant as we have a Taft Raider down after the 20 yard gain by Engelbrecht. Yeah, that's one of those where you've got a quarterback that can really do something with his feet and beat you that way. Unbelievable coverage downfield by the Taft DBs holding their own down there. There was nowhere to go with the football, so Caleb Tuckett took off with it and picked up a sizable play on the, on the carry, obviously. And We've got an injured player we'll down for the best the, there with Quincy Chapman. Yep, yeah, Chapman's down and couldn't quite see what happened on the tackle, but. Trainers just might be giving him enough time to catch his breath. Chapman coming up here at the end of the play. Can't quite see it from that angle. Hey, one of the bands that performs on TNL this year will win a $5,000 band grant. It's all based though on your votes. So get your phones ready during the halftime show and then vote for your favorite band. The $5,000 band grant is made possible by our friends at Sprouts Farmer's Market. Tonight's text, 44332 for Lee. Band one, that is, to 44332. And if you want Taft, you think they're the best band, it's band two. So our high school music service band cam, taking a look right now at the Raiders drum corps. Chapman's still down. Hey, coming up at halftime, it's our countywide service company halftime show. You'll hear from both bands. And tonight you're gonna meet our Vulcan Materials Company, Scholar Athlete of the Week. We're always inspired by the stories that are told each and every week on Thursday Night Lights during halftime. Just amazed at not only the talent of these kids playing football on the field, but other athletes around the city and especially in the classroom and what these young people are doing off the field and where they're going with their futures to service academies, to Ivy League schools. It's just astonishing week in and week out to see the miracle that is the talent all over San Antonio. I didn't really see what happened to Chapman. I he got mixed up with Marcus Silvera, but I just saw the back end of it. Hopefully he's all right. Nice shot by Engelbrecht for another first down. Ryan Escobedo on the catch. Jacob Walton on the tackle, and that's another Kiobasa smoke meet first down. And you see this team, if they get into a rhythm, look out, because they've got all kinds of speed on the outside. Vincent Taylor, whoops, ball on the ground. They just got to stay out of their own way sometimes. Remigio there to fall on it, and Close is going to do a little clock management here, coaching up his quarterback. But Don, we got, you know, we talked about Vincent Taylor in the onset. Marcus Silvera, he, they, coaching staff said how much he grew up during the offseason, and he's the two-time defending triple jump champ. <laughs> We're talking about some really athletic guys, track guys. We've already seen the speed of Woodard, and... I mean, these guys got some weapons now. Second and 14, option pitch from Ingeo to the 20. Get out of bounds about right there. And depending on where they spot it, we've got a first down, but we've also got a flag down. Nice classic little option pitch to Remigio and didn't see the penalty. It's coming Holding. back this way. Fence. So they'll replay second down after backing him up. And again, just as close as offense gets going, they have a fumbled snap and then a holding call. 
Good news for Lee is they're marking it from the spot of the foul. And it'd only be down at about the 32 yard line. Getting the plays from the sideline. Everybody's and Vincent, flashing the play. And here we go. Yeah, Vincent Taylor joining him in the backfield. Taylor's there to block. Instead, he fires over the middle and it's picked off. Woodard was the intended receiver. Andres Aviles there to pick it off. And he's staying down. But what a great athletic play to get the interception. I hope he's all right. Looks like he's all right. You don't like those non-contact injuries when guys go down, but really doing a nice job. You know, really on both ends. I know Caleb would like to have this ball back, but man, that pocket was collapsing. He did the right thing. He stepped up in the pocket, just a little errant with the throw, and 25 making a play. Oh, I, I Chuck, I saw, you know what that looked like? I don't know if we can see it in slow motion, but that looked a lot like the hyper extension that we saw on Jalen Smith at Notre Dame. Very similar. He couldn't get his left leg out and far enough in front of him, and he came down on it strange. Now, uh, hopefully it's just a minor days, I mean, hyperextension. Yeah. yeah, I mean, guys are just, they're not contacted. It's just, you know, for whatever reason, I've seen a glut of those, and yeah, hopefully it'll be all right. First down and 10 for Taft. Stevenson, watch out. Boy, he was one tackle away from popping it. But Hudson Callender was there to stop it. Otherwise, he may have gone to the house. An outstanding job as well over there for the old Taft Raiders. The left side of that line, David Ariano. We talked about the experience up front that Taft has. It's lethal when you have a running back as talented as they have and some really, really talented, swift, big guys up front. Maddox in to block at fullback, and here's Stevenson getting to the outside, finds the corner, finds the 40 near midfield, and he's out of bounds there. Another great run, another great blocking scheme, and Stacy Woodard there to bring him down. But, Chuck, you talked about his patience earlier in the broadcast, and he just... The game is so much slower for him, it seems, than everybody else. Just very patient, and he and then he just got another gear. Yeah, and it helps when you've got, what was we said, Ariano and Cannon Heck, and Leonel Gonzalez, John Garza, Laxton New up there. And those guys are doing the job too. And he really got a nice block outside from his wide receiver Maddox on that last run. His vision is phenomenal. He picks up another 12 here. Woodard there with the tackle, but seems like he's bouncing almost everything. And so far the lead defense has not been able to contain him on the edge. And you know, and Coach Davenport was telling us, you remember Christian Mallard who's now at Air Force. And it looks like Christian's done enough really good things to impress the coaching staff up there at the Air, at the Air Force Academy that he's going to get on the field this year. But apparently that kid had a lot of influence on some of these kids, including Justin. And you know, they saw what kind of a worker he was, what kind of a ball player he was. And you know, they took their cues from him and they kind of learned and he kind of set the table for these kids and what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to carry themselves. and. You know, it's not a bad guy to learn from, that's for sure, because we all know what kind of a player Mallard was when he was here a few Absolutely. years ago. Star, he's the star of our All-Star game as Sam Brooks makes the tackle after about a gain of three. And Michael Cooper, we talked about him being at Taft. He was the guy that could beat you deep, beat you a whole lot of ways, a receiver outside. He's at Navy, so Coach Davenport was talking about he was just absolutely thrilled and doesn't know if it's ever happened where they've had three straight years where they've sent the kid to a service academy. So a lot of good things happen at this high school. Second and seven, pass to the near side. Big collision there, but not before Martin Ramirez picks up about five of that seven. Closer to six, closer to the spot. In fact, they're going to move the sticks, I do believe. Yeah, this is what you got to like about Just Florida's short. defense. I mean, look at how many guys are going to get their hat to the football here. <laughs> you know what? We can't find somebody to hit. We'll hit our own guy. And that last <laughs> tackler coming up was just enough to stop him short of the first down by a couple of inches. Yeah, Abdi Yusuf, you know, was another kid that played here last year, and they really like him. And 
can tell it's a kid that likes his game of football. Whoa, oh. trying to sneak it and it goes backwards. Oh, and it looks like Lee's got the football. Doug Karam blew it up. Lee was in the shot, or Taft was in the shotgun, gonna try to just come up to the line of scrimmage, snap it and sneak it, and instead it's on the ground and Lee comes away with another turnover. How about this? You know, we talked about trick plays and doing all kinds of crazy stuff, and Coach, Coach, Coach Close is known for that kind of stuff, but Davenport and his company, they're coming up with some big plays tonight, too. It's been a lot of fun watching these two teams get it on tonight. Great play by Karam. Let's go down to the sidelines. Mike Hernandez. All right, uh, we got a little break right now, so let's uh, introduce to you. This is Amanda Stevenson, the Taft Band Director. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Doing uh, well. I haven't seen you since last year. That's right. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> so how's, uh, how's the band looking? We're, we're doing well. We're looking great. We got new uniforms this year, so we'll be showcasing those uh, today and over the next few games. We're looking great. And what are we looking forward to halftime? We're going to do a couple different things, which is uh, uh, can't Stop the Feeling, a Justin Timberlake song. We're going to have the kids just have fun with a pop tune, dance a little bit. So uh, we'll have the fun side of it. We'll get our competitive show, also our first movement from that as well. Okay, well, listen, it, I, I'm shame we don't have a camera upstairs because I know the guys, you haven't seen Chuck and... Sure. Oh, <laughs> and the guys that's up there, they really will enjoy that. Well, Thank you so do. much. Absolutely. Have a good year. Okay, Thank I know you. you're going to have some competitions yep. coming up, so good luck, okay? Thank you, appreciate All right, it. back to you guys. Mike, it's so funny that you mentioned that. Chuck is a huge Justin Timberlake fan. <laughs> Engelbrecht <laughs> on the sneak. You know, I think I am only because he's such a good athlete. I mean, there's oh, nothing that Cat can't do. He's yeah. a golfer. He can play basketball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's fantastic. I like JT. You would. That was a big time song, too. They can't stop the feeling. Tell that was what. like the song of the summer. I'll tell you what, we got some. Got some kids mixing it up down there. Marcus Silvera again after the play. We have to watch this kind of stuff because pretty soon we're going to see some more hankies on the ground. Third down and 14 for the Vols. Engelbrecht by himself back there, firing over the middle. Got a man, and it's just over the outstretched arms of Ryan Escobedo. Had him. Good, good route. Good play call. Had the coverage they wanted. Just missed it. And I can't take my eyes off Richard Galindo. <laughs> Marcus Silvera over here on the right, man. These guys are going at it. I like it, man. Opening night. A little NFC East trash I'm talk. I'm telling you, it's, this is good stuff. You know, both these programs feel like they got a lot to prove. Both feel like they've got teams that can compete. You know, we talked about how tough it is in both of their districts. And, you know, these are the kind of games that are going to get you ready for you know, you're going to have a lot of tough ball games on your schedule, and you get a game like this. It's tight. It's close. Got some chippiness on both sides. It's opening night. What don't you like about that? We've already told you about our San Antonio Sports All-Star Cheer Challenge. You can register today at the CW35.com as we take a look at the Taft cheerleaders. Hey, the, you, you heard the uh, the band director say about the, talk about the new uniforms. Uh, it's time, Chuck, for our first uniform czar observation of the year, and that is those Lee Vols right there. I absolutely love the all-whites. You know, and Lee's done a couple of things here. They've gone with the Tampa Bay Buck pewter instead of that old primer gray, gray that they used to have. Yeah, Under Armour, I guess, is kind of, kind of uh, different, and they've got They've got a number, uh, uh, the numerals on the helmets, a la Alabama, Penn State. I like that look as well, too. So Lee's upgraded. Dan Not to mention Danny Hello. Close's. Uh-oh. Ball snapped over the head of Engelbrecht. He's going to try to kick it away, and he's trying to make something out of nothing, and he doesn't kick it away, and instead it's down inside the 20-yard line, and Nathan Cano there to make the tackle and look out with a minute 27 to go. Taft is going to have an unbelievable scoring opportunity. Man, that was some kind of snap. <laughs> I think it was a sign for me to stop talking about uniforms. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, possibly That's so, because I can't mail. match you. That's shirt for shirt on that one. And Engelbrick, as you can see, doing everything he can to just try to gain back some of those valuable yards. Oh, my goodness. Got a gift there with a buck 27 left to go on the half. Tell you what, we've had some plays tonight, haven't we? 
Absolutely. We've had it all. We've had an onside kick, a snap over the head, an interception off a deflection, um, a couple of scraps. This is a good football week one. First down and 10. Taft trying to add to their lead. De Hoyos pitches Stevenson to the corner to the 15, and you got to like his toughness there. Boy, toughness from both sides. Sam Brooks was over there. Caleb Jones was over there. Yusuf was over there. Yeah, Yusuf came up to make the tackle, but I, I like the uh, the moxie there of Stevenson who didn't try to bounce it out of bounds. He just planted his foot, lowered his head, and tried to split the tacklers. Yeah, you got to get seven points here. I mean, you've got a gift from Lee's special teams, and Get a chance to work this clock and stick one in. First and goal inside the Miracle Mattress red zone. Here's Stevenson. Watch out. Stevenson to the five. Flag flies. He scores, but watch out. It could be a hold or a penalty that's going to bring it back. And you know, with a kid with that kind of talent and that kind of room, that's just unnecessary. He's going to score anyway. Well, yeah, once he got the edge, it was over. That's a 10-yard penalty. Replay, first down. And Brightman, you can see Coach Davenport. He's signaling that into his team. He's like, keep your hands to yourselves. Again, I'm really impressed with just the overall play and the presence of Julian DeHoyos, a quarterback. He absolutely held that ball to the last possible second. Made the defender commit to him. Pitched the ball at the last possible second. That allowed that play to get downfield. And obviously, it was wiped out by the penalty. But... You can see why they're excited about this young man at quarterback. I mean, he was a wide receiver last year. He plays fast. He plays well, throws the ball accurately. And you know, Coach Davenport was telling me he's got so much confidence in this kid that he basically turns him loose. If he wants to check out of something, he trusts the kid's ability to read and get these guys where they need to go. Just a very good football-minded stud that you got back there, steady as she goes, and you know, the kind of guy you want leading your football team. Yep, absolutely been in control tonight. He's got a tough road ahead of him when you look at the schedules. In non-district, they're going to play Wagner and Churchill, San Marcos. Then they get into district play, and boy, it's just a tough one. Uh, you got O'Connor, Brandeis, Marshall, Brennan, Holmes, and then we'll see what happens in that playoff as they get towards the the playoff schedule, but some winnable games there for the Raiders. Yeah, and that's the beauty of zone play too, Don. I mean, they could sit here and really do some experimentation in the early part of the season and then, you know, really load up for zone play at the end. I kind of like the way they do it over at Northside. Ball to the corner. Flags fly. That's going to be pass interference on the defense. Ramirez was held up by Youssef, and that was an easy call to make. If it happened in the end zone, I know they got tangled up, but I don't know if I'd have thrown a flag on that one. I'll have to take a look at the replay before I pass any judgment because, I mean, that's a tough play. I didn't see, like, Yusuf got his hands on him, but I uh, guess it, it doesn't matter. I mean, if he impeded his progress from the ball. Pass interference, defense, automatic. Yeah, he was, from the, my first look at it was, it may not have been intentional, but he, he knocked him way off his route. Let's take a look. It's super <laughs> slow motion. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to be able to it see it. happened way before then. Here's Stevenson trying to get to the corner. Boy, he's got his mind made up to go outside, and the Lee Vols sprinted with him to the corner and knocked him out of bounds. Tim Longoria was not about to give up that edge and didn't, and all of a sudden, after scoring and having it called back because of a penalty, Corey Puente and the lead defense have put Taft in a second and goal situation with 44 seconds to play. And you're not kidding. Corey Puente putting on the Jets, getting over there and matching Stevenson stride for stride and not allowing that thing to get into the end zone. That was really showing off some wheels there. Brian Davenport's going to call another timeout. Not happy about substitution patterns going on with his squad. Didn't have 11 on the field. As we take a look at the Lee schedule coming up, and 
Danny Closer was telling us that the last lead team to make the playoffs was 1993. And I, I, I couldn't believe that. That doesn't sound right, but when you look at the district, it's certainly understandable. I trust Mark Kusenberger, and he says it's 95 was the last time. 93 was the last time they won a playoff game. Yeah, and the key again for Lee is going to be, can they stay healthy? You know, they've got really good numbers at Lee. They're, they're a little undersized season. this year, but, you know, again, it's one of those teams. We've seen what they have at the skill position. We see what they have at quarterback. They've got, you know, a, a blossoming offensive line, but they're really good front seven on defense and some emerging DBs. And it's going to be one of those things. It's like every team every year. You know, they've all got some players. And can you keep those guys healthy? And can you keep them on the field long enough to do some damage? But you know what was the most incredible thing that I've seen tonight? When I said that, as soon as that came out of my mouth, Mark Kusenberger, our statistician, on the whiteboard, off the top of his head, wrote 1995 was the last time they made the playoffs. They went 4-8 and eight that season. 1993 was the last time they had a winning season. Off the top of his head. Who knows that? Maybe she'd be sitting in our chair. Second and goal. De Hoyos, oh, go. touchdown. Taft Raiders with 38 ticks left in the half. Taft puts another six on the board. Now just an outstanding job overcoming the penalties, being patient, still getting theirs, and nursing the clock right along the way. So Taft does an unbelievable job taking advantage of the gift that was given them on the special teams play. And then look at the patience of DeHoyos. He following the lead of his running back there. And kind of deking everybody there at the line of scrimmage and then popping it outside. All right, so Taft will try to add to their total. Sebastian Mendez Torres on to kick it away. It's up and it's good. And it's 17-7 Raiders with just 38 seconds to go in the second quarter. There he is, got special kids on both sides of the ball, kids that are doing great things in the community, kids that are doing wonderful things in the classroom. And how about Christian Cole Ingersoll? How yep. about that GPA, Don? You could have put both of our GPAs together and still not come up with 110. We're gonna see more on him at halftime. He is also our Scholar Athlete of the Week, presented by Texas Silk Screen and Embroidery. And as you said, he's active in his church and he would like to attend the Air Force Academy and become a pilot. You know, a lot of these players at Lee go to either the STEM Academy or ISA, the International School of the Americas, all on their campus. And some of the brightest students in all of San Antonio are on that campus. Yeah, I mean, Coach Closer couldn't say enough about the Lee community. I mean, he's got his own kids at the school and they're both soccer players and they made the playoffs this year. Just a lot of cool things happening over at the high school. And, that fellow's young man, or his father played at Texas A&M. Played some baseball at Texas A&M from what I've been told. I thought that was, Mike tell me that before the game. That's pretty cool too. He uh, plays baseball there too with the Lee Vols. Outstanding young men on both sides tonight as the short kickoff is taken and look uh -oh. out. Try one man to beat, oh. almost got the block. Almost got the block. Stacy Woodard came up and there was a collision. Sebastian Mendez Torres, the kicker. But the effort to come up and make that final block on the kick. Oh, that was just, <laughs> that was just man on man. Oh, this is going to be a nominee for sure for our collision of the game. I'll tell you oh what. Goodness. How about kicker, huh? Look, just give me a drink of water. I'll go back. And <laughs> yeah, did you see that? Just <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> oh, man, that's good stuff. That's, yeah, and it's all caught on tape there. <laughs> we do have an injured Raider on the play. And holding his left arm is Anthony Guerrero. And he is walking gingerly, holding on to that left arm. Wish the best for him. Yeah, and that happened behind the ball. A slant route, caught. Good for a first down. Inside the 30, Marcus Silvera fighting that way. Clock management time, 
20 ticks left. Jacob Walton on the tackle. Tick tock, here we go. They're on the wind, and we're inside of 15. You gotta get to the line, and Spike gonna call timeout. He called timeout. See, this is what I understand. There was 20 seconds left when that ball hit the turf. Then you have to wait for the official, because they, they stopped the clock to move the chains. Then they have to wait for the official to wind it. The official winds it, and he calls immediately calls timeout, but they lose eight seconds. To me, that's one of the things they still haven't fixed. There should be 20 seconds left on that clock. Because you want the timeout simultaneously to, to the wind. And I think he called that, but because the officials are 50 yards apart, they don't always communicate. I'm not saying it's the official's fault. It's just one of those things. Well, Close is going to have to take a shot at the end zone here because they don't have any timeouts. And if they do do something outside or over the middle, they're going to have to get to the line of scrimmage quickly to spike the football. And he's got the athletes to send some streaks down the field to take a shot here, maybe take two shots. All right, here we go, high drama. They put two back on, 14 ticks for Engelbrecht and the Vols offense. Five receivers, so it's gonna have to come out quick. Fires the slant. They're gonna have to call another timeout here. But staying on his feet is Woodard, not doing him any favors there. Six ticks, no timeouts left. Not gonna get it off, and that's gonna do it here at halftime as Lee just runs out of time. So our halftime score, the Taft Raiders, 17. The Lee Volunteers, seven. We've seen a little bit of everything, and it's going to be an exciting second half. Yeah, it is. Here on Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Let's go down to the sidelines and hear from Mike Hernandez and our leading coach, Brian Davenport. All right, Coach, how you doing? First half under the books for 2017. What do you think? My nerves are fried. <laughs> uh, I, you know, it's a first ball game. Both sides are doing some really good things, you know. Uh, Coach Close over there, Robert E. Lee's got them moving in the right direction. They make plays on some things, and we gave up a big play. And We've had a few extra possessions, and we've given them a couple possessions. I feel fortunate that we're, we're 10 up right now. We got the one right there at the half. We're getting the ball back. Hopefully we can do something with it. All right, Coach. Well, good luck. Good luck in the second half. You All hang right. in there, okay? okay? Very entertaining first half, guys. All right, when we come back, don't miss the new uniforms of our halftime show. The Taft and the Lee Bands. Stick around. It's a great night for football and Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Welcome to the Countywide Service Company Halftime Show. All right, and welcome back, guys. We're uh, right at the beginning of the halftime. We're going to join the halftime show in just a second. I'm joined by uh, CW Insider, Caitlin Munoz. How you doing? I'm good, and former Taft Raider. Go Raiders. No, you said you, you used to do the thing. Oh, yeah, the walk for dance team. That's what the walk looks like, with big smile and stuff. <laughs> you still got it? Yeah, still got it going, maybe. <laughs> All right, so tell us a little bit about the, your CW Insider and what you're yeah. doing, and then this promotion you have going on, too. Yeah, okay, so CW Crew, always to join. Just text CW Crew to 44332, and then to that same number right now if you text Roadrunner you can win a pair of season tickets to UTSA football games. How neat is that? A pair of tickets? Season, season tickets. Season tickets, a pair. Roadrunner to 4 4 Can I can I win on that? No. You're not allowed to oh, win. Oh no. man, that is Maybe a good deal. I'll take you with them. That is a good deal. I I've got to tell you they're gonna have a big season this year. Oh, I know I'm so excited. Go All Roadrunners. Right. All right well thank you so much. Let's uh I'll let you walk out oh. we'll walk off with it. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin. Now, it's uh, time for our halftime show. First up is the Robert E. Lee Band.
hey, if you'd like to vote for the Lee Volunteer Band for our band grant, just text band one to 44332. That's band one without any spaces. And for complete texting guidelines, you can go to the CW35.com. All sponsored by Sprouts Farmers Market. This year, Sprouts, thanks to Sprouts, our band grant is up to $5,000. Again, vote band one for Lee. Countywide Service Company Halftime Show. All right, welcome back to our County Ride Halftime Show. You heard about them. Now let's check out the new unis on the Taft Band and their performance. Chuck might even sing along to Justin Timberlake Can't Stop the Feeling. I know he'll dance.
I told you Chuck would be dancing. You can't stop the feeling. And if you want to vote for the Taft High School Band for our $5,000 Sprouts Farmers Market Band Grant, just text, text BAND2 to 44332. That's BAND2 to 44332. And to learn all about it and the terms and conditions, you can just go to CW35.com. Watching the Countywide Service Company Halftime Show. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Taft leads Lee 17-7. We're at the half here of Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. And it's right now time to recognize some great, hardworking kids with tonight's Scholar Athletes of the Week. Each week, we highlight one student from each school. At the end of the season, one of these students will be awarded a $10,000 scholarship Presented by Vulcan Materials Company. Let's we meet this week's students. Meet Haley Beach, a senior at Taft Communications Art High School. Haley plays left field for the Taft's fast pitch softball team. And she's not only outstanding in softball, she's also a star in the classroom. She's got a 4.0 GPA and she's ranked eighth in her class. But it's not always easy working the sports and the homework in at the same time. Um, it's a lot of late nights, especially during softball season with late games. We play at seven, but don't get home till maybe 9.30 to 10. And then with the magnet school, our curriculum's even more difficult. So homework until one or two in the morning sometimes, and then get up and do it all over again. And as you might expect, someone with this kind of dedication has some big plans for the future. I hope to go to Texas A&M, but not play softball. And um, after that, I want, after getting the regular four years, I hope to um, go into dentistry school and then maybe eventually specialize in orthodontics. Haley's involved in many extracurricular activities, but says her favorite is actually working with elementary kids. Because I get to see them once a week and knowing that a little, um, like visiting them and just being with them, it can change their day. Our next scholar athlete is from Lee High School. This is Christian Ingersoll. Now, Christian plays football and he also wrestles. He does admit, though, he was a little surprised to be chosen. I mean, I was surprised. I didn't expect to get picked for this award. There's a lot of other guys in my school that could have been picked, but I'm honored. But Christian is definitely deserving. Now, he's got a whopping 110.87 grade point average, and he is in the top 5% of his class. He says his aggressive instincts help him, especially in football. I love the contact. I like hitting people. And yeah, it's just, it's a key part of who I am now. Like Haley, he's involved in many activities, including National Honor Society, and he's involved in the first Presbyterian church clubs. And Christian is aiming high, because after high school, he wants to go into the Air Force as a pilot. And he says his father is his main inspiration. He's just been with me through everything. He's he introduced me to baseball and football, and I just look up to him. Congratulations to Christian and Haley, your Vulcan Materials Company Scholar Athletes of the Week. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> We've got a little bit of a crowd watching right now. I'm joined by Valerie Gattasai. She's actually with Vulcan's Materials Company. How you doing? I'm doing good. So you saw the Scholar Athletes package, and, and it's, it's uh, you know, Christian and Haley are, are the first two of, of many. Thank you guys for doing that. It's very important. You don't, I get to interview them every week, and, and it really means a lot to them to be selected. Yeah, we're so excited to be a part of that program. I mean, anything that we can do to help the communities that we serve, I mean, we're really part, glad to be part of it. And you have something else coming up, too. What's it called? The Quarry Crusher. <laughs> the Quarry Crusher Run is a 5K and 10K that we're having at our 1604 and O'Connor location for you. So it's going to benefit a charity called Soldiers Angels, yes. and we're really happy to be helping the military community because it's so prominent here in San Antonio. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we want everybody to come out, register, going for a great cause. If um, if you're registering through the website quarrycrusherrun.com, you can use code LIVING, L-I-V-I-N-G, for you guys to um, to get a discount. And that's a 5 and 10K? Yes, 5 and That's and 10K. on the 9th? Yep on September 9th. Okay. All right. Great. Well, thank you so much yeah, and thank, thank you guys you. for continuing yes, to support no us with Scholar Athletes. Back to you guys.
Celebrate middle and high school teams that go beyond the game. San Antonio Sports and the U.S. Army are recognizing teams that have exhibited key values through their actions. This week, we recognize the football teams from all the Northside Independent School District high schools. Last football season during week 11, these teams wanted to honor the Special Olympic athletes on their campuses. They invited them to run through the team banners at the start of their games, giving both the Special Olympic athletes and the football players a moment to remember and personifying the values of respect, selfless service, caring, and sportsmanship. San Antonio Sports and the U.S. Army appreciate high school and middle school coaches who inspire their teams to serve others. To learn how parents, teachers, and coaches can nominate teams that go beyond the game, visit SanAntonioSports.org. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time for our Ernest Roofing second half kickoff. The Lee Volunteers will be the ones kicking and the Taft Raiders will be the ones receiving as we get ready to get things underway here in the second half. Well, it was an entertaining first half, wasn't it, Don? We had a little bit of everything, some trick plays, some big plays, some turnovers, explosive plays. Good stuff. Looking forward to the second half. Yes, sir. It's been a good one, 17-7. Both teams had some huge things happen for them and then some big turnovers and penalties and things they'd like to get back. Here's the kick return and being dropped down at the 32 yard line is Clyde Jones as we take a look at our Smiley Dental and Orthodontics first half highlights. Of course, the big play was this interception early in the ball game as this Shannon Hatchett, Hatchett made a nice pick. And then Justin Stevenson turned that into six points, going all the way down the sidelines for the touchdown. It was 7 0 after one Taft Raiders. But the Lee Vols got back into it. DeAndre Wooder on a slant, 53 yards to the house, right down the middle. That cut the Taft lead to 10 to 7. But then DeHoyos took it in himself for a four yard touchdown run. And that puts us at 17-7 where we are right now as the Hoyos and company have the ball again. This is a quick one-on-one -on -one coverage. His knee was down as he caught the football was Dylan Pugh, his first catch of the night. Little quick hitter. Picks up about five yards, and that'll put the offense in good position going into second and five. You see some of the total yardage. Taft dominating. Rushing yardage, 168 to 29. We knew Lee had a better passing attack, at least philosophy-wise, that's what they like to do. They lead in that category. A lot of penalties, a lot of turnovers, and that's why we're at 17 to seven. Change the formation. And now we've got another motion and that they change it too many times you can't go off the line scrimmage of game back. on the offense five yard penalty second down took them too long delay a game and just like that here we go again nice little quick hitter on first down you're at second and five and now you're at second and ten but i really like what taft is doing i mean they're using first down more often than not as a throwing down, which has really opened up the running game. And Stevenson, man, he had most of their yards. I mean, the kid's up over 150 yards rushing already. Yeah, he's special. And he's got it again. And he's coming our way. Cuts it back. Finds a seam. And picks up about seven. Uh, Danny Closa has the job of trying to stop him tonight. Our Mike Hernandez caught up with him before the second half kickoff. Mike, we heard from Coach Davenport. What Closa think of the first half? down on some of the things that you just mentioned they needed to cut down on the penalties they had uh, four procedure calls they had a drop pass in the end zone they had that bad snap he says we just can't keep killing ourselves like that he says then maybe maybe we could get something started on offense he says but until then uh you know we're going to struggle all right thanks mike again stevenson with just a ton of patience to wait for that hole to develop and he busts forward and good for a first down christian ingersoll our 
Scholar athlete of the week that you met at halftime makes the tackle along with Lance Davis. And again, can't say enough about the big guys up front. Ariano Heck, Gonzalez Garza, and New. You got a player down. We're going to take a break while they attend to the uh, injured Lee volunteer there. We'll come right back with Taft leading 17-7. Welcome back to Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Taft enjoying a 10 point lead here as we play on in the third quarter. And we're happy to report that Stacy Woodward, Woodard was actually able to get up and walk off under his own power. Of course, his brother Ratley went to Wagner for a year and now they're back. And Woodard doing a really nice job on the play before helping to stop that run. De Hoyos keeps, picks up a couple on first down. They'll give Taft a second down and eight situation as Hudson Callender was there to make the tackle along with Sam Brooks. Big number 77. We told you about him in our pregame. He's got some looks. UTSA, one of the schools interested in big number 77. And he's hasn't disappointed tonight. Yeah, and if there's any school that knows something about defensive linemen, it is that school. Oh, my goodness. So they stacked there. Got some fellas playing in the pros, too. Second down, a little problem with the snap. De Hoyos does a good job to rein it in. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage as Mark Severa forces him out. Yeah, and Lance Davis doing a really nice job there too, sniffing that one all the way, number 21. Coming up from his linebacker position to get that outside and stop it for a pretty short game. Sets up third down and about seven for the Raiders as they will run two wide receivers to the left-hand side. They've got Maddox in the backfield now with Stevenson and DeHoyos, the signal caller. The play action, they'll fire it to Maddox, the fullback. He's going to get the sticks, and he's picked up another Keel Bossa smoke meets first down for the Raiders. Just another nice play by Julian DeHoyos. He sold the run with the play fake and tucked it down, rolled out to his left, just kind of let the flow of the play take care of itself, found his fullback. Yeah, they look like they the first down, and here we go. Taft coming out here to start the second half with multiple plays, moving the sticks, and moving the clock. That was one of their goals tonight. They wanted to shorten this game because they really respect the explosive players that Lee has on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, Lee did a good job blowing that thing up. They just made a better offensive play. Here's Stevenson, patient, tiptoeing, but he's got nowhere to go this time. In fact, he's going to be dragged down from a loss as Woodard was there to make the play. Yeah, good to see that young man back in the ball game. And yeah, he's wagging his finger. He saw that one all the way coming up from his deep safety position and getting another hat to the party there. That's what you got to do with Stevenson because as we said, he's not the easiest guy in the world to bring down and you've got to bring multiple guys to the ball if you want to have any success at containing him and also bringing him down. Woodard just a junior. Playing a lot of snaps here. Doing a good job. And here we go again, we've got another timeout this time called by Davenport who is upset with his offensive unit because they're just not lining up right so he burns a timeout we will too it's 17-7 Taft over Lee midway through the third quarter hey check it out we were out of the Taft pep rally this morning all part of our America's Diamond Smile Cam. Highlighting these great fans for both the Raiders and the Vols, and they were having a good time out at town. They're fired up because they're on TV tonight. Telling all their friends and classmates, make sure you check us out on television. Yeah, look at that kid showing some class with her Nirvana shirt. I like that. Respect your elders. <laughs> Wait a second. Timberlake wasn't your guy? No, look, there's, we've got some dabbing going on in the stands, too. 
Oh, man, yeah, everybody having fun. It's a great night. Mike called it, man. Perfect weather. <laughs> this is Texas, man. We start him early. And he got a burp him, too, man. <laughs> Oh, they have too many Coca-Colas on the sidelines. Oh, that's funny. Second down 10 for the Taft Raiders. They lead it by 10, trying to add to it. Nice little play fake. Got a man, fires it. This time it's caught by Maddox. Maddox hurdles the tackler all the way down to the 24-yard line. Big fella fullbacks got some ups. Lance yeah. Davis with the tackle. Yeah, Lance Davis had pretty good coverage there, but just another outstanding throw by Julian DeHoyas. I mean, this guy, when he gets open and there's no flags, he gets the ball in his hands. I mean, he doesn't miss many throws. Hey, speaking of Maddox, part of our Texas Silk Screen and Embroidery Player Profile, kid's an Eagle Scout as well. Just a fantastic young man and making plays out of the backfield. You can do a little uh, fullback, plays a little slot wide receiver. They hand to Stevenson, patiently waiting for the hole to open. And then taking on tacklers like they're not even there. And then at the point of contact, somehow finding a way to bounce off. But Tim Longoria making another tackle. He's had a nice night for the Lee Vols. Yeah, but getting back to DeHoyos, man, I really like the way this kid's running this offense. He's 9 of 13, throwing the ball, creeping up on a 100-yard night. Chucking it. I tell you, this team gets some balance in the passing game to go along with their running game, and they might be pretty solid when the zone play thing starts up. Doesn't look like week one for him. He's just no, not at all. in control. Fires over here. It's Maddox again. That one went through his hands. Checking some other scores for you tonight. Churchill leads Clark 34-20. Cougars got on the board in the third. Central Catholic just mauling Kennedy, 41-14. Holy Cross leads Lanier, 28-zip in the third, and it's Wagner over Laredo United South, 35-17. This is the 11th play of this drive. Yeah, and it has so far been mission accomplished for Taft. Going down the field, moving the sticks. Very... No conservative play calling with the throws and the runs and keeping everything right there in front of them and really working on this clock too. Nathan Trevino doing a nice job to come up to make the tackle for the volunteers. And that'll mean a fourth down with the ball spotted at the 25 for Brian Davenport. What kind of kicking games he got? Gonna punt it away, gonna go for it territory. He's gonna run Torres out there to try one from about 42. He looked pretty good kicking that first one. They're having a personnel problem here. De Hoyos a hold. This is also great fake territory. The hold is up. Kick is up, rather. It's drifted on him, but it's good. 42 yards for Sebastian Mendoza Torres. And Taft adds to the lead. It's 20 to 7. Here at Gus, we're back with more Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights on the CW 35. Hey, welcome back. We told you earlier we're going to tell you again about our San Antonio Sports All-Star Cheer Challenge powered by CPS Energy. Hey, send a picture of your school's cheerleader squad. Tell us why they're the best. And guess what? At the end of the season, the top two vote-getters will get $1,000 and a $500 grant. The top four squads will cheer at either the U.S. Army All-American Bowl or the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game presented by HEB, both, of course, on Saturday, January 6th in the Dome. You can register your cheer squad at CW35.com. Sebastian Mendez Torres on to kick it away after a 42-yard field goal. A little pooch kick, which is the norm now in high school football. Takes the receiver out of bounds. That was Ryan Escobedo. And Chuck, more and more often now, high school coaches have taken the return game just out of, of high school and college football. It's smarter, I guess they think, 
to just live consistently with the ball at the 30, 35 yard line than have the opportunity for some of these electric players to to bust them on you. Yeah, not only that, I mean, you're talking about, you know, if you don't have a kid that can really kick the ball deep, number one, and then number two, you talk about the return game and, and a lot of guys get hurt on special teams and, you know, it's a long season, so no sense getting a guy hurt there. Option pitch from Engelbrecht. Look Remigio out. Remigio is gonna be gone. Darnell Remigio to the 20, one man to beat and caught, caught at the five yard line. Unbelievable speed from Clyde Jones to run him down. Yeah, you're not kidding. I thought he was gone too, partner. And we talked about the lead running backs. They were going to kind of do this by committee this year. They didn't have their guy that was a stud last year, but I'll tell you what, that young man's making a name for himself. Engelbrecht with the pitch at the last minute, and then, boy, did he get some blocks on the outside. 66 yards. Looks like we may have had a fumble on that play. All the way down. Ball spotted. Now at the 10. Well, they said it was at the 10. Now it's about the 7. Yeah, we talked about Lee, too, and how explosive they are outside and throwing the football. Man, that was a huge play. I mean, because we're still on a two-possession game here. They stick this thing right here in the end zone, and... They're going to have a chance to take the lead if they get a stop in another score. They're in the Miracle Mattress red zone. Second and goal. This time on the keep, it's Engelbrecht. Breaks one tackle, gets inside the five, down to the four, before Richard Galindo brings him down. A good defense there by Taft, staying at home and getting a lot of guys to the ball there. These are blood and guts yards down here inside the red zone. Taft has got to rise up, try to make a stop here. Keep that momentum on their side. And as for the balls, you know, they're obviously looking for the punch here to get this to within six points. Yeah, two big plays here for Lee. I guess you take the field goal if you can't get it here on third down. You cut it to a 10-point lead, but boy, this is a big play right here. And the Taft defense blows it up. Engelbrecht with nowhere to go. Peyton Kinski, one of a, a bunch of Taft Raiders in there again with Juan Alarcon. And just a nice play by the Taft D. Yeah, a lot of window dressing by Lee on that side. They stacked the receivers on the left side, trying to get some confusion on the Taft side, and they were having none of it. They went right for the ball and were able to make a huge play, and you're going to have to settle for three after you take the loss there. All right, so they'll spot this one at about the 16-yard line. It'll be a 26-yarder by David Rodriguez. His little brother is the kickoff guy. He's the field goal guy, and Rodriguez's kick is up and good, and Lee cuts it to a 10-point game. So a nice possession for Danny Close's squad. I know they wanted to punch it in after the long run all the way down to the five-yard line. Didn't quite get the points, but they do put some points on the board. Gives us time to tell you about the trophies that will be awarded tonight. Look at those. Brand new, got the Hallmark University Championship Trophy, the MVP. Our thanks to our friends at Monarch Trophy, 3443777. Hey, if you're looking for trophies, plaques, or custom engraving, nobody does it better than the folks at Monarch Trophy. They've been doing it for years. They've been with us since year one on TNL, and just a fantastic job by Monarch Trophy each week. We give those away, and again, they'll make anything you need for your business, for your teams, at 344-3777. Could be hard to pick that MVP tonight, Chuck. Indeed. Got a few. I'll tell you, it's been a lot of fun so far, and you know, when our station general manager, Dean Radler was, you know, he's kind of the brains behind the schedule. We were looking at games each week, and I know he was, they try to get the best matchup that we could get every single week. And it's been really fun tonight watching these two teams go tete-a-tete, -tete, and this has been one heck of a ball game. It's been tight. It's been fun. And I think, you know, that's what people are going to get a chance to see a lot of this year. I mean, every week is going to be, it should be a tussle. 
That was one old looking football that they kicked off there. Look, kickers love those old balls that are broken in. Oh, yeah, nice and soft. Don't Francisco Vasquez with the return, kneels it down right there at the 32. I was down before the game trying to pick up balls with one hand, and I couldn't do it anymore, man. <laughs> they did something to the balls. Either that or I'm getting old and I'm shrinking. <laughs> Shut up. You know. <laughs> You know, you no longer have the G.I. Joe Kung Fu group. Uh, no, not anymore. Yeah, they play. There's a there's the kick ball. That's the K ball. That's about 14 years old. <laughs> That's good stuff. A little extra air in them. No offense to Tom Brady. Well, good drives by both offenses, Don, to your point. I mean, you know, Taft goes down, starts the second half, has a nice drive. They get a long field goal, and then Lee answers back. Let's see if these offenses now have a rhythm. Let's see if we can have a... Really fun ending to this football game. De Hoyos fakes to Stevenson, rolls out, buys himself some time, and now just throws it away. And a smart play. We talked about his uh, heady personality and just his calm. And for week one, after not being a starter a year ago, he just has a lot of poise for a guy in week one. Right. And, you know, you could see on that particular play, too, there's some week one stuff that these guys are kind of sifting through because Martin Ramirez is receiver. That's who he was looking at downfield and Martin thought he was going to tuck it and run. So he started throwing blocks. So, you know, it's one of those things as we get a couple of games into the season. Those guys will be on the same page. Stevenson hits the hole, but it's quickly filled. Ingersoll was there. 40 been all over the place tonight. Third down and long now, call it nine for the Raiders. They lead it by 10. Good football game here tonight at Gustafson Stadium. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. And this one is not even close to being decided. And the option pitch, the Hoyos keeps, picks up about two, but well short of the first down. Lee's defense read that option pitch intended for Stevenson fairly well. De Hoyos had nothing to do but tuck it and run it. And so the lead defense will force the Raiders to punt it away and look out. The Vols with another chance. Touchdown here, and it gets real interesting. Oh, you know, it comes down to that gamesmanship. Here you are, you got third and long, and you're just deciding you're going to tuck it, and it's more important for these guys to run another 30 seconds off the clock. I can't blame them. They got a 10 point lead. DeAndre Woodard back. He's telling everybody to get away from it. Takes a great hop for Taft inside the 25, and it'll be down right there. So Caleb Engelbrecht and the Leval offense haven't seen much from Vincent Taylor tonight, so look out for him. He's a sleeper. Very, very talented, and he could break loose at any time as we take a look at our Hallmark University TNL. Top 10, we start the year with Judson at number one this year. Judson and Steele, boy, are going to be great later in the district schedule. O'Connor, Smithson Valley, Johnson, Churchill, Reagan, Brennan Brandeis, and Bernie Champion is our TNL top 10 to start the season. Of course, that'll change quickly. Yeah, Don, and I was talking about the schedule just a few seconds ago and talk about how stacked we are. Next week, we got O'Connor and Churchill, two of those teams. There's a pass over the middle, caught. Showing good strength to get another Kiel Bassa's smoked meets first down is Ryan Escobedo. And I tell you what, the Vols have some pep in their step. They know they're in it. They often score the last drive. They're moving with pace. Nice Fire it out play. here. Woodard makes a man miss, gets to midfield, steps out of bounds. Another nice gain on first down. And again, they're going with pace here. Jacob Walton forced him out, along with Clyde Jones. Taft, their defense has been really good tonight. Ben, but don't break. Keep everything in front of you, minus the one touchdown play. They've done a very good job of keeping everybody in front of them. But this Lee offense is a lot of fun when it's got rhythm and pace, isn't it? Yeah, Close is a great offensive coordinator. And Engelbrecht keeps this time. Took a big shot, Nathan Cano there. Good play by the Taft defense. Yeah, but Engelbrecht, he's built like a brick, like a speed bump out there. He's 
definitely built to absorb the punishment. All I kind of right. like the glasses look, too. That's slick. So on third down, Charlie Kerfell. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Dickerson look, right? Yeah. Trying to bounce it out. There's Taylor. Gets the first down. Going to be pushed out by Clyde Jones. And here we go. Nice little bounce back after a rough second down play. Taylor's limping a little bit. So he'll get a chance to catch a breather and see if he's all right because it's the end of the third quarter. Taft over Lee, 20 to 10, but the Vols are moving the football as we go to the fourth quarter on Hallmark University, Thursday Night Lights. iSchool Music Service is a one-stop shop for all your musical needs. Along with band and orchestra instruments and their supplies, iSchool Music also carries a variety of percussion equipment, keyboards, guitars, and the best prices in San Antonio. We also offer music lessons and have an outstanding repair shop. iSchool Music has rent-to-own instrument packages tailored to meet the specific guidelines of schools throughout San Antonio and the South Texas area. We are iSchool Music Service, with locations in Castle Hills and in the Alamo Ranch Marketplace. Whenever a craving hits, Jack's got your back. Somebody craving my really big chicken sandwich? The really big chicken sandwich combo for $3.99. Double the chicken, double the cheese, topped with hickory smoked bacon, plus curly fries and a refreshing drink, all for just $3.99. Thanks, Jack. You're welcome. The $3.99 really big chicken sandwich combo, only at Jack in the Box. Time for our Smiley Orthodontics highlights. No call, no question. This was the highlight of the third quarter. Remigio's long run all the way down inside the five yard line. 66 yards set up a field goal. That cut the lead to 10 and now Lee's on the move. Down 10 with a first down inside the Taft territory. You're going with three wide, now a guy in motion. Taylor's in motion. Here comes Engelbrecht right up the middle. Takes a shot, bounces off, and picks up about five. Galindo was the man to bring him down. And how about the shot by TJ Okanati? <laughs> Went for the kill shot. <laughs> he did. Yeah. Forearm shiver. Yeah. Wrestling movie. <laughs> Amigio bouncing outside. Tries to get to the corner. Does. Actually picks up a couple yards late. Noah Shannon Hatchet. Young man with the interception early in the game. Don, you impressed with the speed of both of these teams? I mean, on both sides of the they ball. They get to I mean, the edge quickly, both of them. And especially the pursuit of those defense. Here's Donnell Remigio's numbers on the night. 5'6", 145. We'll run it right at you. Changing the play is Danny Closer. Third down and five. Going deep. Post play. Had him wide open. Marcus Silvera was open on the post, and he just overthrew him. Quincy Chapman had good coverage. But there was some separation right at about the five-yard line. Yeah, we talked about the track athletes that they have at the wide receiver position. And this Silvera kid is something else. Yeah, I like that call by Closa. Had one-on-one -on -one coverage. Had him on the post. Defense. Of course, he's got Woodard on the other side that you're looking at right there. Defense. DeAndre's already had a big touchdown tonight. Defense. Play action. Defense. Buying himself some time. Fires. Got a man. Caught. Inside the 20 is Ryan Escobedo. Here come the Vols, y'all. Caleb Engelbrecht again, really doing a nice job. There was a guy in the backfield kind of disrupting his rhythm, but he's just super patient. He saw that the defender that was pursuing him fell down, which bought him a couple of extra seconds, but making a nice throw on the run to his left. Still on his feet is Engelbrecht going backwards now, and he's going to be brought down there right at the 20. 
As they broke through the Miracle Mattress red zone. Ball was spotted at the 19. Nathan Cano again on the tackle. Yeah, I mean, anybody who's ever picked up a ball and tried to throw it away from their arm side like that knows how difficult it is. And especially when you've got people chasing you, to be that poised and have your shoulders square like that, that's pretty impressive for a guy who's really seeing, you know, his most game action ever in his career. Remigio in the block, three wides, deep posts, tipped away, good defensive coverage. DeAndre Woodard was the in intended receiver, but Galindo for the second time tonight. Remember the little pass over the middle earlier where he stuck his left arm out and knocked it away at the last second? He's a ball hawk here again, perfect textbook D. That and Ricardo Recio really did a good job getting pressure right in the quarterback's face that time and making Caleb throw long before he wanted to. And it was a little reason why it was ball was uh, underthrown on that one. Tough to do when a guy's hawking you right in your face. All right, key play, big play in the night. So Closer wants to talk it over. We're coming back with third down. Closed captioning for tonight's game is sponsored by DNA Reference Lab. Danny Closa looking at his play card. Got to draw up the best one he's got in his book right here. Huge play for the Leaf Halls in this football game. Down 10, third and nine on the move inside the Miracle Mattress red zone. He sends three wides, two wides to the right, two to the left. There's a little play action, pressure coming for Engelbrecht. Not gonna be able to get it off, although we may have a face mask late, or could it be holding? Nathan Cano with the pressure. Well, you cannot say enough about the job that the Taft DBs did on that particular play. When you blitz and you don't get home, and the quarterback has this kind of time, it's usually you're in deep dookie. But there was just nowhere to go with the football, and Don, you called it. Good eyes, Eagle Scout. First down. I got the specs on. Got the specs on. Half the distance, too, so huge play. Yeah, an automatic first down. Taft's defense really doing a nice job there. Just incidental contact with the face mask, and just like that, Lee's got a fresh set. Knocking on the door with over 10 minutes to go and a chance to make this a one score game. And they can still get a first down. Ball spotted at about the 12 and a half. Here's Engelbrecht running, rolling, throwing just over the outstretched hands. Receiver wants a pass interference and he might get it from the back judge. Yeah, we got two flags down. The passer on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic. All right, so roughing is the call. That's an automatic first down, half the distance. So they'll spot it at about the six. Look at Engelbrecht though. You know, we're gonna see the back end play. Defender took a step, an extra step, and then delivered the blow. But boy, I really like what he did, man. It looked like Aaron Rodgers on that play. Deke the defender, sucked him in, and then got outside to make the play. Holding against the fence is declined. Roughing the passer, accepted. First down. All right, so there you go. Roughing passer was the more serious of the two offenses. Yeah, you'll take the six yards instead of the five. Yeah, this is kind of a move point half the distance. Nice. Engelbrecht's going to keep it. He's going to walk in for a touchdown. Leave Halls. Caleb Engelbrecht. Zone read. Saw it all the way. Read it perfectly. And look out. We've got ourselves a football game with 9.48 to play. Man, you're not kidding. Boy, did he hold that ball right at the last second. It just underscores how difficult it is for a defense to stop that play when it's run properly. And everybody going with the running back. Caleb keeps it. Not a scratch on him walking in. All right. This to cut it to three. And the extra point is up, and it is true. 
Game on, partner. Heck yeah, 20 to 17. Here at Gus, Hallmark University, Thursday Night Lights. How's this for week one opener? All right, welcome back, guys. I'm joined by this, the senior class president, Vincent Sioria. Yes. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, the atmosphere is great here at, uh, at, the, at Gus Stadium. We, I just want to tell everybody at home that watching right now that it's a great atmosphere, and it's great to be a, a, a Tower Raider right now. And the short Raider pride. Just come to the games. It's very fun. You only have a couple years, high, a couple years left in high school. I wish I was back in high school. <laughs> All right, you got to give us a big smile now. All America's right. Diamond Smile Cam. All right. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you. Good luck this year. Thank you. Keep it up. I like the I like the kids' effort to get the student body to come out to the football games. That's that's awesome. You know, that's the one thing that's really really changed, Chuck. Since you and I were in high school back in the Stone Age, is there's so much going on in the world these days that the stands aren't nearly as full as they used to be. But in just the last two years, I've seen a new sense of community pride and our, and our attendances have been better on Thursday and Friday nights all across the city. So maybe there's a rejuvenation of uh, school spirit in, in these football games. I mean, you know, I, when we were in high school, you couldn't go to Northeast Stadium on a, yeah. on a Friday night without there. You couldn't find a seat. And uh, hopefully you'll see more and more of that. See those great Madison teams with Buddy Knowles. Yeah, that was actually <laughs> pre-me. I got to Madison my junior year, and Buddy Knowles was already was a gone. legend. Yeah, yeah, but yeah I, I knew the legend quite well. Yes, he was a legend, and you know what? He still is. He ended up being a Mean Green Eagle. Yes, Texas. he was. You gotta like that. All right, check it out. You're talking about our Beyond the Game. We showed you that earlier tonight. How San Antonio Sports and the U.S. Army are recognizing the teams that it, showing values beyond the game, beyond their actions there on the field. And you can learn more about how parents and teachers and coaches can nominate great kids who are doing things at their community, showing goodwill. And watch next week's TNL halftime show for the first of our features on that as De Hoyos completes the ball out to Silvera, or Martin Ramirez, rather, on a nice game. The Taft offense wanting to answer lead now. I'll tell you what, you can't say enough about both of these quarterbacks, right? I mean, this is another outstanding throw. I mean, you're out on the run. You had two receivers out there. One guy short, one guy a few guy a few yards deeper. Hit him right in stride. So it's patient. A, yeah, it's a kid only had five passes last year. So, so know poised, it. yeah. There's a play action to Stevenson. He's always a threat. Telling his wide receiver go deep. Fires to the outside, incomplete. Intended for Carlos Herrera. Good coverage there by Corey Puente. Yeah, good coverage and really good job by his receivers working back towards the ball. The quarterback's over there running for his life. Trying to get a guy to fly free. Sometimes you got to come back and help him out. Nice job by the Lee defense. Trying to get their offense, the football back. Yeah, big number 68, John Garza throwing a nice block there, too, that helped keep that play going. Second down and 10 for Taft. Here's Stevenson looking for a seam. Found it. Gets some tough yards there. Goes forward for about six. As it's time for our Texas Silkscreen and Embroidery Player Profile. And there's a, there's a Chuck McAtenick. Chuck, I'll let you have this one, huh? No Le Tuala. <laughs> I got it, man. Nice job. Hey, our man Josiah Talaafa uh, from UTSA loosened us up on all that. Man, we got to speak in a different language now. It's good stuff. <laughs> we practiced the uh, the last two names, but I, I, didn't want, I wanted you to attempt the first two. Eagle Scout, too, man. Kid doing all kinds of great the things Hoyos in the community. can run for the first down and does across oh, the sticks. Oh, mercy. Is that Martin Ramirez blowing up somebody from the blind side? Got a block downfield. I'll tell you what, man, there is some hitting going on. You could, you could tell that this game means a lot to both parties here. What a great game to start the season. You know, three-point game. Just a smidge under nine minutes left to go. Both these squads duking it out. I like it. Way to start the season. 
Three-point game with 8.47 to go. Taft trying to extend it. Lee trying to get the football back for their squad. First and 10. Raiders. Stevenson. Oh, boy, is he good. Oh, Ball's loose. Lee's got it. Big 77, Sam Brooks. Came up with it first. Big, how, yeah, how about this Lee defense, especially in this second half? I mean, Stevenson just made a couple of unbelievable moves, and he was just so shifty. And look at this with his feet. And then look at, oh, that was a strip, and he stripped the ball. All at once. My He's, ball just took it out of his arms. That's why we profiled Big 77 before the game. That kid Sam right there. Brooks. You think Frank Wilson's going to see that one on his tape? Yeah. Reminded me of the Rammstein song. Let me see you stripped. Man, he freaking made that happen. Nice work. Uh-oh. Ball's out. Albrecht trying to bring it in. He gets hit. Loses yardage. And now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty. The lead defense coming up with a huge play. And Boy, that is not the way you want to start a drive down three in the fourth quarter. But a good job by Caleb getting his hands on the ears and at least living to fight for another down. All right, second down, about 15. Throws that little bubble screen to Woodard. It worked earlier in the game. He picks up about five or six. Lee's got the football as Juan Alarcón brings him down. Yeah, Alarcón did a very nice job sniffing that one out. You saw they baited a couple of the Taft defenders towards the quarterback to try to set that up, but Alarcón had none of that. Blew that play up and made a really good save there for the Raiders. Third down, eight. Engelbrecht pressured, fires over the middle, and it's incomplete. You know, had he taken off, he would have had some running room. Instead, it's incomplete, and it's going to set up fourth down and they're in a part of the field where he's just not smart enough. It's just not smart move to kick it here. I mean, to, to go for it here. Well, Clyde Jones did an amazing job right there. Getting to that football, timing that out, and then knocking the ball away. And I'll tell you what, I really thought Cale did a really nice job hanging in the pocket, stepping up and looking for his guy downfield. He could have probably taken off, but... You know, if that ball gets there a smidge earlier, they're picking up the sticks anyway. So Clyde Jones is back to receive what we think will be a punt. Brett kicks it away. Jones is going to let it bounce. And it's going to be down right there about the 28-yard line. So a missed opportunity for the Lee Vols after that turnover. Defense wanting to step up one more time here. 7.20 to go. Three-point ball game at Gus. Welcome back to Gustafson Stadium. We got a barn burner. You haven't been with us all night. Shame on you. You've missed a good football game, but we're glad you're with us here for the finish. 7.20 to go. Lee and Taft. The Raiders jumped out in front big early, but Danny Close's Lee volunteer offense has been sparked of late, and he cut it to three. Taft now with a chance to try to extend that lead. And this young man here, Julian De Hoyos, has been a cool character for the Taft Raiders. Kielbasa smoke meets first down as he hands to Stevenson. Picks his way a couple of yards. Nick Poole there with the tackle. And Chuck, I know Stevenson, we talked a lot about his talent, his ability, going to the Naval Academy, committed, got great burst, but He's probably kicking himself a bit. He's put it on the ground twice tonight on what looked like just a kind of plays where you forget to protect the football. Yeah, I mean, and again, you know, it's just typical things that you see in week one. You're not used to all this contact and the speed of the game and all that, but I'm sure it'll get tightened up. But again, you got to give credit to the lead defense. They've really done a nice job tonight overall. De Hoyos has a man wide open down the field. Instead, he goes underneath. It's caught, or is it? Yeah, I think it was. It looked like it was caught. The line judge on this side 
ruling incomplete, but they're going to give it to him. It's going to be a first down. Downfield, number 80, all the way down there, was wide open by 100 yards. Francisco Vasquez is the man who made the catch. Yeah, that would have been a tough play to complete because he got flushed out of the pocket. But again, I mean, we've been saying it all night, and just for the sake of redundancy, I mean, it's just another outstanding throw on the run. I mean, the coverage was pretty good there. They had a guy underneath and over the top, and he still slipped it in for the completion. And we have a flag on the play, which is going to back Taft up, which is going to set up now a second and 12 for them. Look like a positive play. Instead, it's a penalty. And looking this way the entire way, and completes it. Nice big game there to Dylan Pugh, who's a big receiver, big target for him to throw to. Yeah, Dylan did a really nice job, too. Coming out of his break, he lost his footing a little bit, but was able to right himself, get his hands up, make the catch, and then bust it forward to move the sticks. That's a huge play for Taft as they try to kill this clock and hold on to this three-point lead. It's another Kielbasa smoke meets first down for the Raiders. I think we'd see a steady diet of Stevenson here to run some clock. And he gets the carry right up the middle. He's content with one or two, gets back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard or so, and then gets pushed back. Hey, coming up after the game tonight on the CW35, we've got Penn and Teller fool us. And whose line is it anyway? That's coming up tonight on the CW35 right after Thursday Night Lights. Whose line is it anyway? It's been on TV for 100 years now, I think, right? It's a long-running show. I don't know. You could have fooled us. <laughs> De Hoyos fires. Herrera, the intended receiver, good coverage over there. Youssef has been there all night. Yeah, he has. And boy, I'll tell you what, it's a good thing that that ball was thrown low and away, too, because if it was thrown in the direction of the receiver any higher, I think Youssef jumps the route and may have taken that one back yeah, to the house. Yeah, it looked pick six all the way. Yeah, I think that was one of those things where DeHoyos did a really nice job. He saw that that wasn't going to work, and he definitely threw that thing low and away to make sure that there was no chance of a pick. Third down and seven to Hoyos. Looking deep. Now fires deep. Got a man, but there was contact. No flag. Hmm. And that may be a good call. I don't yeah, I mean, know. He was playing the ball. It's a, it's a tough call. It's a judgment call, obviously. And he got two kids running down the field, and the receiver stopped. Wow. So... It's a tough call to make on the run. I'm not so sure they didn't get that right. I think they did. Hey, by the way, if you want to vote for Lee's band for our band grant, it's texting band one to 44332, band two for Taft, again to 44332. So the Vols will get the ball back. It appears five minutes to go. They're staying away from it. They'll get it back right near their 25 yard line. Will this be the drive? for Caleb Engelbrecht and company. Game winner on the line if you can get six. Hey, it's time for another one of our Texas silkscreen and embroidery player profiles. Vincent Taylor, number two in your program, number one in your heart for the Lee Vols. A GPA over 4-2, look, look at this guy's resume. National Honor Society, French Honor Society, very bright kid, captain, going deep over the middle. That's him. He's got it to the 40, 35, 25-yard line. Vincent Taylor falls on the football. May got the wind knocked out of him when it was all said and done. Carlos Perdono with the coverage, but a nice ball from Engelbrecht right on the money to Taylor. Yeah, you got... Marcus Silvera and Vincent Taylor, these guys are on the quarter mile team together. <laughs> I mean, they got track athletes all over the place and you, you can see, I mean, they just, these guys, their ability to get deep and beat DBs is unbelievable. And you know, this offense, when it catches a rhythm as the season goes along and they stay healthy, man, they're gonna be able to score some points now. Engelbrecht up the middle, inside the 15. Everybody thought it was a fumble, it was a shoe. <laughs> Lost his shoe. Yeah, thank God his foot stayed on. 
Wow. He's hurt. Meanwhile, they're trying to. No, I think he just went down to tie his shoe. Okay, I hope that's the case. Uh, Taylor is the one on the sidelines after taking the point of the ball right in the sternum. He's had the wind knocked out of him, but see if he can get back in there. They'd love to have him. Meanwhile, Engelbrecht's got a first down inside our Miracle Mattress red zone as Kielbasa smoke meets first down and a little zone read. Touchdown. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Lee Vols. Caleb Engelbrecht on the zone read again. Oh, they just had the tap defense really on its heels on that drive. I mean, they hit him with the home run to start, and then it just the whole playbook opens up for you. And in that time, you've got the parting of the Red Sea for Caleb Engelbrecht. The Lee Vols have jumped on top, 23-20. We told you this game was going to live up to the hype. It went down to the wire a year ago. And the Lee Vols lead by four with 3.42 to go. David Rodriguez's extra point is good. But there is a flag down. Yeah, Taft just roughed somebody. And that's going to come on the kickoff. So they're pinning themselves even deeper. You could tell Coach Davenport is not too thrilled about that. Earlier when that happened, uh, there was a touchback. They kicked it through the end zone. Yeah, he got a shoe back just in time to score a touchdown. Yeah, he's you can see his confidence level just going sky high the longer this game goes on. He feels like right now he can do anything. I'll tell you what. The defense, a penalty has declined. The try is good. Is this our fourth or fifth year doing this? And I know it's the ninth overall. Is this our fifth doing it? I think so. This might be the best game we've ever had a chance to yeah. cover. I mean, that Burbank game we did a few years ago was really nice too, but. This has been one yeah. heck of a ball game. Highlands a couple years ago. If you yeah. want to watch them all, go to the CW35.com. If you're, uh, you graduated nine years ago, you played on TNL, you got a big beer belly now, and you're not in shape, but you want to show, you, show your kids <laughs> how great you once were, you can always go to the CW35.com, go to the archives there, and you can show your new wife just how svelte you used to be. Yeah, Uncle Rico. <laughs> but I do like the slimming effects of these new shirts that they were giving us today. That's sweet. <laughs> I don't know about that. You look slim. I never look slim. <laughs> Suck it up. Hey, Suck right it on on camera. We're on camera. <laughs> Intern Derek here is doing a great job spotting, as always. And the great Mark Kusenberger out of frame is doing the stats. He's their extraordinary statistician. Wearing his Aggie colors today, too. Got the maroon shirt and the gray pants. Looking good. Hullabaloo, connect, connect. All right, 3.42 to go. Taft needs a touchdown to win. And there's a stoppage. As now they're going to... Some, uh, some strategy here after the penalty of where you want to kick it to. Hey, here's what we got. We, we, we told you we were more proud of Dean Radler in this schedule than we ever have been, and this is why. O'Connor and Churchill, two top 10 teams. Brandeis and Bernie Champion, two very good teams. McCullum and Clark, Jefferson Burbank. You get into some great district battles there with Brennan and Holmes, O'Connor and, and Stevens, and then down at Alamo Stadium with Edison and Highlands. And then look how we close the season. Uh, for the first time in history, Reagan is going to be on Thursday Night Lights. We've got them taking on Chuck's alma mater. And we had some great uh, cooperation with athletic directors late in the season, both with uh, Karen Funk at Northeast to, to, to move Reagan, and then with Steele and Clemens. Uh, that was uh, supposed to be uh, a game that was going to be played on a Friday or Saturday. They moved that to Thursday night. And, and those are two teams that could be playing for District championships, uh, top 10 rankings, top two or three rankings in the city. Uh, certainly, we're going to see great players in that one. Have yourself a knife, kid. Jeepers creepers. These quarterbacks have been outstanding tonight. And I can't wait to see what DeHoyos has in his bag of tricks here with 342 and the ball in his hands. Brian Davenport going to try to win this ball game late. The return decent down to the 25 as Cody Jones does the honors for the Raiders. We've been so impressed with 
De Hoyos tonight, and now he's got a chance to pull a Joe Montana. Last minute drive, 335 to go. Yeah, both quarterbacks have been outstanding. And of course, we talked about Taft's offense and how they're really built up front. They got a lot of experience, a lot of depth. A lot of good athletes up front. And then of course, they got the home run hitter in Stevenson back there too. And really, Don, there's no need to rush this thing. I mean, you got 336. That's a lot of time to move the ball down the field. He fires on the slant. It's caught. Good gain. Across the 40 is Martin Ramirez. He's got a kill boss of first down. And it stops the clock to move the chain. Lance Davis on the tackle. And you see Lee right there on that first play, a little loose with the zone. Again, you don't want to get hit beat over the top. Keep everything in front of you and then tighten it up as Taft gets the ball down the field. And maybe they'll make a mistake before that. I formation with Stevenson behind De Hoyos. They'll hand it to their star back. Puts his head down to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard and a half. Lance Davis again on the tackle. We tick inside of three. The lead defense has risen to the occasion a lot of times tonight, causing turnovers. Making plays on third down to get the three and outs. Can they do it here? Play action. De Hoyo scrambling. Gets out of bounds after a nice six yard gain, seven maybe. And again, we talked at the onset about Lee's front seven being really the backbone of this entire football team. But I'm telling you, man, these guys, these younger DBs that they got and guys that are seeing some game action for the first time have really held their own. I mean, again, nobody bid on the play fake and everybody covered downfield. And DeHoyles had to take off and run with the ball, and he did a really nice job picking up some yards there, and at least making this a somewhat manageable third down play. Yeah, it might be two down territory here. Don't know if you go for it or not. It's going to be an interesting call if they don't. Third and four. Here's Stevenson. He's going to get the edge. He's going to get the first down. He's going to get out of bounds. And that's a big time play by Stevenson and a nice call by Davenport to give it to your bell, Cal with the game on the line. Yeah, not only that, I mean, you see, we, we talked about the patience, but uh, there's just such an art form that this young man is really good at. I mean, he's basically gliding along the line of scrimmage and daring the defender to make a move towards him. And as soon as they do, he takes a little extra burst. And he did that to two guys that time and was able to move his way for the first down. All right, first and 10, here we go. Straight drop. De Hoyos wants to throw. Fires, and it's caught. Great job by Pugh to fight the defender. Ball's out late, though. I think he was down. Yeah, I thought he was down, too. But he came back for the football big time to make that catch. And he got some help from his teammate there to jump over it. I think he was down when the ball came out. And we're going to take a look here, but a lot of activity. He caught that ball in traffic, and... No, it's just hard to tell if it did come out early, but well, it's out because he was never down. Back that up, fellas, about four seconds. There, he's still in the air when that ball is free, but they didn't call it that way. There's no replay in high school football. Their ball, he, he's still up in the air. So Taft gets a break here because he's on the body of the other player right there. Yeah, and the ball's out. He's not down yet and that ball's out. But Taft may have also recovered. Here's De Hoyos. Nice scramble. Firing. Out of bounds is Garcia. Lord, De Hoyos doing another nice job. I mean, he gets the ball, makes a little move back there. He's looking left the entire time, then squares his body and makes a throw across the field the other way. I mean, just great field leadership and vision. More importantly, Garcia gets out of bounds to stop the clock at 141. We've got second down and three. The Raiders trying to win it late, down four. De Hoyas fires, got a man there. You catch it? And it's ruled incomplete. 
Hard to see from here. Didn't get it to set up third down and three. Yeah, Francisco Vasquez doing a really nice job going down low to try to snatch that one before it hit the carpet, but not able to quite make the connection here. And he got a buck 32 to play. And another big third down awaiting the Taft Raiders. Definitely two down territory here if you don't get it. But they're going to put it in the hands of the main man again. Stevenson's got the first. He's got the 20. He's got the 16-yard line. And they'll stop the clock momentarily to move the chains. We'll be inside of a buck and a quarter on the wine. Yeah, when in doubt, get it to your best player. And again, De Hoyos. He gets the ball and makes the pitch right at the last possible second. If he'd have kept the ball, he'd have gotten destroyed. But boy, it's just unbelievable the speed that Stevenson has when he gets the ball and can kick it out there like that. Inside the Miracle Mattress red zone here, Stevenson. Stevenson finds the hole inside the 10, right to the 10. Longoria on the tackle. And we've got a timeout taken by Brian Davenport. So this is where execution in week one is dicey early in the game, but now you really can't afford one of those offside procedure penalties or a hold here. This is money time. Down by four with the season on the line. All right, right now we're gonna bring you our pick and pull collision of the game. No question what this was. It was the, the kicker, Sebastian Mendoza Torres, <laughs> going all out for his squad. Bam! Yeah, he can kick and put a lick. Nice. That's our pick and pull collision of the game. You know, Don, we talked about in the first half how sloppy it was with the penalties. There were 11 total penalties in the first half. Man, this has been a clean second half for the most part. And it's really impressive to see these teams kind of get their, fitting, their footing and play some football. And this has been a really exciting game <laughs> going here down the stretch. and. Taft trying to quick pitch him here. They got it. Throws the slant, flag flies through the outstretched arms. But they weren't set. Of Pew. And what were we saying about penalties? A false start. Penalty, second down. Now they tried to hit him quickly after the timeout. It was a great design play, but you just got to get set before you do it because there was mass confusion on the lee side. This is one of those things, too. You're under a minute left to go. But Brian Davenport, this drive has been great for two reasons. You're driving, you have a really good chance to score here, and you've milked the clock while you did it. You got one timeout left. Option this way. Looking for Stevenson to pitch. Doesn't have him, so he runs out of bounds. Outstanding job on the outside again by the Lee Vols. We've been saying it all night. Tim Longoria, Caleb Jones, both those fellas out there stringing that out and making sure that wasn't going to go anywhere but out of bounds. And here we are, another third down. Can they convert? They've done it twice in a row on this drive. Well, they don't have a choice, do they? Down by four, third down and ten. It's two downs for the ball game here for the Taft Raiders. And the young man who's been so poised tonight, Julian De Hoyos. He's got a stud running back behind him, buying him some time. Fires to the end zone. Route confusion there as his intended receiver came in on a post. He threw the fly route, and nobody was there when the ball landed. Yeah, it was a little out and up, but it looked like the receiver really didn't sell. Like he might have been confused or not gotten the right play call. So there really was nobody there at the end. So it all comes down to one play, and Davenport wants to talk it over. It'll be fourth down and 11 with 38 seconds. I say one play. They can still get the first down at about the seven-yard line to keep this thing alive. And Chuck with about eh, 11 yards to go. I'm not sure I wouldn't uh, put it in the hands of number 20, even on one of those toss sweeps and let him see what he can do. Yeah, or give it to number 20 and let him deke everybody and then throw it. You know, you might have to do a little something crazy here, a little something off the beat. I like path. that. I like that halfback pass idea. And we'll see what happens. I mean, that's one of those plays. I don't know how 
you know, I'm sure they've got plays for everything, but you know, you're still talking about week Z. And that's a lot of stuff to sift through. And again, I mean, you can see how both of these teams offensively continuity wise got better as this game went along. But both defenses have played pretty well, too. I mean, we talked about the explosiveness that Taft has on offense and some of the playmakers that Lee has. And these defenses haven't gotten enough credit, too. I mean, this is a 2024 ball game here late. Somebody's going to be really thrilled tonight when this thing ends. De Hoyo, straight drop. Buys time, rolling to his right. Going to try to get the stick. Not going to get there. Lee turns it over on downs, and the Vols have the football back with 32 seconds to go. Doug Karam came up to make the tackle, and the Vols student section's going bananas. Caleb Engelbrecht, man, the player trying to make a play. There was, he had a receiver that flashed a little bit. It would have been a really dangerous throw. We just felt like, man, I think I could do this with my feet. There was just too many defenders between he and the sticks. It wasn't quite able to keep the drive alive for his team, but you gotta like the fight in the spirit of all these kids out here tonight. This has been a heck of a game so far. Wow. Taft on our screen has one timeout left. Lee, I would think if that's the case, would be able to just take some knees here and be fine with it. And Lee's student body. What a way to kick off your season. Of course, the Lee whole Lee community uh, has been in the news this week with the uh, voting of the board to change the name of that school. So it's been an emotional week for the community and uh, a very fired up Lee student section right now. Well, Taft is going to be able to not even stop this clock. So clean exchange should end it. Yep, no timeouts for Taft. That knee's going to do it. And the Lee Volunteers are going to start the season 1-0. and Yeah, two good buddies going at it. Close on Davenport. And I think Coach Dav had them 2-1 to one in the head-to-heads, but it's all going to be square. And I remember Coach Davenport was telling me earlier this week, he goes, you know, yeah, he loves... Closer like a brother, but they both respect the game too much to not pour their heart and soul into this contest. And what a ball game. 17 points in the second half for Danny Close's bunch. And Lee's going home with a week one win. Uh, if you're a coach, you love that. Not because of the W, but because what the kind of confidence and the kind of resolve that your team shows and gains from this in a week one. Boy, that's the way you want to kick off your season. And if you're Tavs, you got nothing to hang your head about. They played great. No, you've got so much in front of you. And we were talking about this before the game, too. You know, week one's great. You want to start off the season with a win, but there's still so much to be played for for both of these teams. And, you know, we saw a lot from Taft tonight that leads me to believe that they're going to be a very tough out when zone play begins. All right, it's time for our night office solutions. Play of the night. Get it? Our thanks to Mitch Huffman and company over there at Night Office Solutions. And here it is, Caleb Engelbrecht putting the Vols up for good. Zone read, another score by Engelbrecht. And the Lee Volunteers are victorious. We'll go down to the field and talk to the victorious Vols and hand out our Monarch trophies when we come back. Welcome to the Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights Post Game Report. Do the MVP first, and then I'm going to bring you in, okay? Welcome to the Hallmark University TNL Post Game Show. Lee comes back, rallies to beat Taft 24 to 20. Let's head down to the sidelines. Mike Hernandez standing by with the victorious Danny Closa and his squad. Mike? I am. How about them Lee volunteers, huh? <laughs> Okay, so you guys, just a heck of a game. I want to congratulate you. A great effort. Maybe one of the best games we've had on TNL ever, okay? 
We're going to start with our MVP, and again, there's a lot of people that we could have chose uh, for tonight, though. Uh, we're going to go with uh, your junior quarterback, Caleb Engelbright. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing? Let's go ahead and look at the camera. 14 for 23, 216 yards, and 66 yards on the ground. Two TDs, one throwing. Pretty good night, big guy. I honestly just want to thank my team. They all believe in me, and my coaches believe in me. We worked hard all, all season, and I owe it all to these guys right here. If it wasn't for me, if it wasn't, if it wasn't for them, I would not be playing out here right now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Coach, how about, a, how about a hand for your winning coach here, eh? Coach Clauser, that was a great game, man. I mean, that was serious. I know you guys are good friends, and it was a great competition, but everybody really played uh, up, up to their very best. Yeah, he's, uh, this goes to everybody who supports our high school, from our alumni, uh, Booster Club, our administration. You know, all these guys here, I, I can't be more proud to be a Robert Lee volunteer, and, and hats off to these guys for never quitting. And, you know, our, our motto this year is make your bed, and we made our bed tonight. <laughs> Thanks a lot. All right. Here you go. I'm going to let you give this to him. For 2017, the first Thursday night lights, your winners, 24 to 20. Robert E. Lee volunteers. There's your trophy. Congratulations to Coach Danny Closa and the Lee Vols. We've got much more coming here on Hallmark University's Thursday night lights. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Time for our Smiley Dental and Orthodontics highlights. Big time play early by the Taft Raiders as Noe Shannon Hatchett came up with a pick. That led to Justin Stevenson's long touchdown run here. Did a great job of buying himself the outside and going the distance to make it 7-0. Taft looking to take control early, but Lee kind of wouldn't go away. DeAndre Woodard runs a slant. He's going 53 that cut the lead to 10 to 7. Lee saying, hey, we're here tonight. But it was all Taft after that for a little while, at least. As the Hoyas goes in, that's a four yard touchdown run. Our MVP, Caleb Engelbrecht, showed us his speed, the first of his two touchdown runs. And here's the second. That's the game winner. Goes in late. And the Lee Volunteers, as you said, Chuck scored 17 in the second half and really evened up a lot of those final stats. Oh, my goodness, did they? I mean, look at that. Total yards about equal. Of course, Taft with the ball control had more first downs. And as we said, you know, I think Lee had six penalties in the first half. So they were clean pretty much in the second half. Turnovers, of course, a lot of week one stuff. But, I mean, start to finish, when well, you're talking about Two evenly matched squads coming in here, both with a lot to prove this year. That was a heck of a football game here for the first week of Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. Boy, was it. Boy, was it. That was awesome. Hey, they're all going to be good this year. We've seen the schedule. All right, next week, in fact, we've got O'Connor and Churchill coming up next week. So it's another great matchup for Chuck McAtenick and Mike Hernandez down on the field for our statistician extraordinaire, Mark Kusenberger, up in the booth here with me. Brian Watts and Chris Kotfuss and a cast of thousands in the truck who do all the heavy lifting. Thanks for watching Hallmark University Thursday Night Lights. We'll see you next week when it's Churchill and O'Connor on TNL.